Be America. I shower in my jeans. Huh? I shower. I shower in my jeans. They're, they're painted on. That's. <laughs> Uh, uh, well, well, we are recording. We are recording. We just you, you know you know something that women have the option of they can do that body paint thing and walk down the street naked and look like they just have really tight clothes on. With yes. our with our genitalia, you can't do that. That's the main feature yeah. of the vagina. Yet they never stop bitching. <laughs> All these advantages <laughs> that they have. <laughs> We're in a comic book store. <laughs> this is like the anti athlete place. I really feel like I stumbled into the wrong place. <laughs> that is absolutely correct. That's actually one of the things I was thinking about you. This is Bill Burr, of course, everybody. And uh, we I was thinking about you, and there, there are those comedians that kind of uh, – Christian Finnegan. Do you know who that is? Yeah. Sure, you know Christian. He's the guy whenever we go, oh, you're the white guy in Chappelle's show. Yeah, the mad real world, right? Uh, I'm like, nah, that was, uh, that was Christian uh, Finnegan. Of course, of course. I thought I was the white guy from the Chappelle show, and you're... I'm finding out it was actually Christian Finnegan. Well, I, yes. I was the uh, – <laughs> That was a doughy sort of Christian like a, Finnegan. He was, that was back, doughy back, before. Back, back when he was super doughy. Right. And like then Christian P90X Fin- came out, and then that was it. I believe it was South Beach. I'm, sh- South I'm Beach? ashamed that I know how he did it. But uh, Christian Finnegan said that there were two types of comedians, those that got called fag and those that called people fag. And the name of the show is making it weird. You probably seem more like a guy who called people fag. No. That's that's like you like you, 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 you awkward guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get into you it, guys Don't have, censor yourself. <laughs> you guys have like that, like... Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know that in a hateful like, You guys way. don't like... You, anything aggressive no. is, I bet he played football and stuffed a right. guy like me in a locker. Yes. You Get know? into it. Yeah, I want, it, I want it, to talk like, about this. Fuck you, man. We're not keeping it down. And, for your and, piece of shit. and it isn't. It isn't like that. Yeah, that guy just came up. We're being shushed. The like you said so perf- perfectly. This is the opposite of being shushed. Yeah. We're trying to reach a large group of people. Uh, Baby, see America. It's yeah, like, something's we taping it. downstairs. Hot. You can see her clown. Yeah, and okay. she's like, and yeah, I'm in a comic book store. That means I'm progressive and interesting. Right. Fuck you forever. So, anyways. Yeah, like I want to be clear. Uh, I don't. I didn't think you called people fag, but you're right. This is exactly what I'm saying. and What I want you to address. No, I did is both. Like, you like sports. I had a very well rounded childhood. You know, I called people fags. I was called a fag. Yes. I I beat some kids up for the most part. Uh, in my later childhood years, I got beat down because uh, yeah, I, I hit my growth spurt late. So baby fat Bill lost his title. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was born with advantage. I was I was ten you were pounds. Baby fat Bill. I was ten pounds. When I was born, and I was just not one cute. <gasps> there's not one cute picture of me. <laughs> I look like uh, the 50 foot baby that could right. like, crush a city. Oh my god! So I was able to ride <laughs> that weight advantage to about sixth, seventh grade, and then all of a sudden, kids started shooting up, and then that's when I had to start being funny. You mean weight advantage? Like you were like formidable because of? I your... wasn't fat. I was. I was. But I was thick. You were I thick. I was husky. You were I stout. Called husky, yeah. I, yeah, you I, were there. I, I had everybody by 10 pounds. When you weigh 70, right. somebody's got you by 10. That's like them yeah. outweighing you by fucking that's a 80. Big, yeah. That's a big fucking deal. But you you, uh, you have vulner- a lot of vulnerability in your act. You oh, certainly fuck f- you, f- Pete. Ah, I smell it on you. <laughs> I just don't mean to minimize you or reduce you to some sort of jock. But you do like sports. You're a fucking, I love sports. You're a fucking man. Huh? <laughs> you're, I love sports. You're a fucking man. I'm not. You're a man. I, I am capable of unbelievable acts of cowardice. I believe that. In fact, one of the first bits I saw you do, this it was a show that changed my life. I was at the Comedy Connection in Boston. I actually just talked to Gary Goldman about this because mm-hmm. it was you and Gary Goldman, and the rest of the people were pretty pretty garbage. And you went up and you guys changed it for me. That was like a click moment for me where I was like, oh, you know what I mean? I don't know if you remember the first time you saw like fantastic stand up, but it was you and Gary Goldman at the old comedy connection in Faneuil Hall. And I went up and oh, I talked okay. to you guys after the show. And it's very surreal. Were we you... rude to you? And just no. like, yeah, yeah, whatever. whatever no, man. you were incredibly kind. Oh. And you did a bit. Must have been early in the career. Yeah. <laughs> you, you were saying, I remember a couple things you said. Howdy doody face. I have a howdy doody mug me face. Yep. You remember that? I remember those. And then you told the story about uh, the girl on the subway going, help me. Oh, wow. That was a long time ago. And you go, this is like 10 years ago, over 10 years yeah. ago. This is probably 12 years ago. And you were like, I'm only doubling the work for the paramedics. So there's the vulnerability. But I can still see you grilling more than I can see, uh, perhaps. Well, I think you, you, go, you go two ways when you get bullied. Either you decide to fight back or you get into comic books. <laughs> I think that that's basically you either withdraw into this fantasy world where there's these superheroes that can. Ha- I'm not shitting on. I am shitting on it, but I'm not because I think the drawings are amazing 
<laughs> but it's like soap operas. I don't know how to jump in when you're a thousand episodes in. Yeah. And there's, you know, Spider Man, there's the cool I'm not costume, in, I'm, there's the evil one. Yeah. And, yeah. And I, I don't. Uh, I think that was a Venom reference. I'm not sure. I about saw that. somebody, there was one down there, there was some character named Pain Man. And I think yeah. I, I think they're running out of names. Yeah, that's too close to Rain Man. That's, that's what, right, I, that what I, I when I saw that I was like, is this like a is that a joke? It sounds like a uh, uh, like a Wayans Brothers Pain Man. Yeah, that it sounds, sounds fake. silly. Yeah, I'm it's kind of like in sports they're out of ferocious animals, right? To name teams, yeah, after, yeah, yeah. So now they're moving on to weather. <laughs> Are they like they have a, the, yeah. like the Oklahoma Thunder? There's a couple of Thunder, <laughs> uh, like any anything that <laughs> involves lacrosse or indoor football. It's always going to be like the cold front versus the tornadoes. <laughs> <laughs> the hurricanes, the hedgehogs, the summer summer shower versus the, it, I don't know. It's got, well, you okay? So we grew up in Boston, outside of Boston, mm-hmm. both of us. I think that gives some of that edge of being attacked by bullies, even if you're not bullied, just living in Boston. It's a harsh place. When no, I go it's, it's back, a, it's it's a great place. I love Boston. It's a great place, and I think that there's like, you just sounded like Al Gore. It's a harsh, harsh place. It's a great place. I love Boston. No, but I do love Boston. <laughs> but every time I go back, I'm like, how do people do it? No, how I do definitely they stay here. I never noticed how angry. I, I understand Can't both how, be I, true? I, how you stay there, but I never understood how angry that town was. That's what I mean. How angry I was until I left and had to leave for a while till I came back, and I was. That's when I first noticed how tightly wound. The average person is there. But that's, as far as like living there with the Four Seasons and the sports and the food, I mean, I, I could live there in a second. You mean literally the Four Seasons, not the hotel. You mean like experiencing four... I mean the group. Independence. <laughs> no, the, the, yeah, the... Uh, the, the yeah, no, what I, the when, I, when I fly into Logan, as I do, do you go home for the holidays? Uh, no. Okay, well, I go home for the holidays. I pay that toll, and there's a feeling of like, welcome to Boston, fuck yourself. There's a feel... For oh, me, that, am yeah. I picking up on that incorrectly? There's, a, it's the driving. No, I think you're right, but I think you're also overly sensitive to it. Do you realize you're like six foot three? Do you understand six, that? Yeah, I'm six six. You're six six. Yeah. Okay. Well, you still have yeah. in the core of you. You got bullied at a pivotal point in your life somewhere. Somewhere, and you've become this dude. When meanwhile, you could probably crush anybody who ever messed with you. I know, if, but if Bill, you decided me and you in a fight, you definitely win. You, you got decide, the eye of the tiger. Huh? You got it in you. You're dude, you're picking up you a coat rack. No, yeah, no, you are. No, it's like no, the departed. No. Don't, you're don't, hitting don't me. let the anger you and the accent. Me. <laughs> Psych you out. That's what. You're That's doing. what I do. You that do. is what I do. I buy it, dude. You're six six. You could like. My brother used to say that. He was you like, could if you put got up, it together. I mean, you're like average height NBA. Yeah. So, Michael Jordan was 6'6". Six, six. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he still is. So, I yeah, know. <laughs> <laughs> he's living. Actually, I heard he's 6'4", but they bumped it up because they do. I don't know. You would understand that. Uh, I, I saw him one time at a casino in, in uh, Vegas, like, walk through, and it was awesome. Just see, he, Of course, he always, like, dresses to the nines. Like, yeah. Like, and this is when he was still playing for the Bulls, I believe. Yeah. Um, he, he just came walking through, and he had, like, security flanking him. And it was just one of those, like, it was oh, like God. seeing, like, Elvis. It like, is. Jesus That's Christ. our Elvis. There's, That's going to be a story yeah. that the kids in next generation won't believe. Michael won't Jordan. Believe. Like, it just, the guy was, he was just perfect. Yeah. Well, here's what, here's something that I'm picking up on you in your comedy and in life that I very, very much admire. And I know that's strange. To say. I'm a huge fan. I, I think you're fucking, when I, when the comedian that Listen, I'm trying. stop buttering me up so no. you can trash me. Well, just this, get on I'm with not this. even trashing you. <laughs> in fact, that's exactly what I want to talk about. You talk about it in your comedy and you just caught me doing it. The Al Gore thing, where I, I, you seem okay fucking having opinions, not apologizing how you feel, admitting you're full of shit, too, as right. well. All Completely. of it. You're right there on the surface. You could skip a stone on billboards. All there. It's not in the depths. It's there. And here I am, dancing as fast as I can to make you like me, to make everybody like me. How did you... Were you always this way? Uh, no. You do comedy, and I think about, like, for example, uh, it seems you seem like the kind of guy that doesn't... Can I win- dress your shirt yeah, where yeah. you have the at-ats yeah. and the thing you that's spun around it? Yeah. And then, yeah, I never got into it. My younger brother had all the toys and stuff. I, just, I, I was at that age. I was just too old. Yeah. You know what it was? Was Star Wars <laughs> came out, and I completely missed... Like, my parents didn't take us to movies during that period because all the kids were young, and it's just, you know... Yeah. And, so... And that was like when you had, we only had three channels because the, our UHF antenna was broken. Yeah. So I don't know where they advertised Star Wars, but I remember it came out over the summer and I completely- You missed it. I missed it. <laughs> okay. In, in between June and September, September I come back and everybody's going C-3PO and Chewbacca. I felt like I moved to another country. 
I didn't know. Did you see Star Wars? And I, I admitted it to a couple of people, and they were like, "Oh my god!" That, that you that, hadn't. I hadn't. Yeah, and they couldn't believe it. Uh, so, and I started lying, almost like when somebody makes a sex joke when you're young and you pretend yeah. to get it. Yeah, I started doing that with Star Wars. So then I saw I saw Empire when that one came out. And I kind of liked that one, and then the next one with the Ewoks. By then I was just too old, and then I don't know. And then just like people are so into it you feel that, that, I don't, that, that a lot of your comedy comes from feeling outside of things that's what's no i'm delight. actually was going to talk about how you have you have the two ad ads facing each other yep. then you got some sort of fighter jet well that's luke's ship that, yeah the way he, he flew around it to trip the to thing trip them but it actually made a heart above it because he's tripping both of them and they're kissing Oh, is that what it's? But yeah. th- but this goes back to you totally That's how canceling out that. that you're six foot six <laughs> and and shouldn't be messed with right there. Why would you wear that? Now you know who would do something like that? Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee used to do shit like that to bait people into fighting him, and then he would fuck him up. He used to act actually like he was gay. He would act effeminate and walk around like, oh my god, what's going on? And then someone would step to him, and he'd beat the shit out of him. And he really had a sense of humor. I, I mean, I don't know if to, I'd read it in a book because like, I hung out with the guy. But they said, because he said, if you get beat up by a tough guy, you can get over that. But if you get beat up by a sissy, you, you'll never forget that. Like, that'll stay with you. So I was just like. That's the experience he was trying to create for Yeah, them. that's what I liked about that. Oh, my God. That's manipulative and masterful. That's crazy. Well, I'm just thinking, like, how much of a badass are you that you're deliberately baiting people into trying to kick your ass which is the main thing that is a guy you try to avoid you, you, you around right. women you try to act like you're not afraid i'll throw down with anybody right i'll go to prison and right, i'll be the guy right. stabbing somebody right you try to act like that but reality I, is so much of your life you, you're just trying to avoid confrontation which goes back to comedy is then you bring that on the stage and you, you're going out there and you're you're uh you're trying not to get your ass kicked basically yeah. meaning get heckled don't yeah, like you're me, you're yeah. trying to so, kill, not so be early on. Killed. Early on, I was totally please like me, please like me. I worked squeaky clean because I was trying to cut down any chance of me getting heckled because uh, that was the number one thing that I feared: bombing right. and being heckled and all that. And I just and did it long enough. And your, then... your your setups are like mission statements. There, it's this like truth telling declaration of. Listen, like, don't break it down too I'm much. I'm going to. <laughs> no, I'm it really just saying isn't. it's it's you the could... ramblings. Of a, a someone who doesn't read, uh, you and just reference out reading a, way, a book. I see. Figures out how to, you just how to, how to reading bully a book. the crowd into his opinion. Just a moment ago, you what, said what I read book? it in a book. book. I don't know. You oh, said what it. Bruce Lee yeah, autobiography? Bruce Lee. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's heavy reading. Let me read about this guy who didn't wear a shirt and beat the shit out of people. Yeah, I was going to. I was going to get around to War and Peace, but the new uh, Slash biography. Came out. <laughs> you still, count those? Yeah, I'll, I count those. If I ever have enough money to build a library. <laughs> The books on the shelf are going to be so pathetic. It's just all going to be like uh, <laughs> Aerosmith. But you could get heckled for just your setups now. You could say women are an, uh, an unending wave that just eats away at our, at our sense of self. And that is ca- cause for someone to stand up. If you didn't proceed and if you weren't already established as this guy that's going to like kind of say what he's thinking and be celebrated for that, people would be like, fuck you. I mean, go to an open mic in a costume of a 22-year-old open micer, like right. not you, and say women are just this. And, 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 and. No, but they could do it too. Yeah, I they mean, could, they, they could do it too. Maybe it's, they could. It's not, but it's, it would be harder. No, it's not. Uh, yeah, it'd be harder because it's a hell room. But if it was actually a comedy club, if you go on stage and you just say what you're thinking, yeah. if there's really nothing malicious in it, like that shit that I say over the top, if you have half a, if you took Psych 101, yeah. you're like, this is an angry guy who needs a hug. <laughs> That's what you'd really do, rather than taking it at face value. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. It's like if you're having a dip debate with somebody over, like, you know, this banana isn't ripe enough to eat. Right. And you make a couple of good points, and I go, you're a fucking dick. <laughs> right there, I've abandoned the argument. But but a lot of times, people, they'll re- well, you're a fucking asshole. Right, right, And then right. it stops being about the banana. You were right. right. You were right over here. Right. The person totally left it out. So you, you right. can't, like, you can't take what people say. That analogy, some of your analogies don't even make sense. I went into debating. You're trying to keep it to the bananas. Is what I, you're I'm saying. trying to say that, like, um, that you know, people will look and, and say that you know, I, I hate women when they watch when they watch my act, and it's just like you know, you're, you're the kind of guy who watched No Country for Old Men and was like, oh, that ending was stupid right. because they didn't because <laughs> they didn't walk you right through it. <laughs> That's one of my favorite movies of all time for the specific fact that people don't understand that Tommy Lee Jones is the main character. 
Uh, not not the fucking psycho. That's true. No country for old men. Right. It's about a guy where life has passed him by. He doesn't yeah. know where he fits anymore. Yeah. He's chasing a ghost. One uh, of the last things that psycho says is he says to those kids, you never saw me. It's a fucking unbelievable movie. Yeah, well, he's chasing death. Yeah, yeah, basically. Death yeah, is, it, sugar it, is And all, all of that. He's, he's chasing the views of society. He, he right. wants to live in the past. The monologue up top is is the whole point of the movie. And then it ends with the monologue. And then people yeah, yeah. just like... Yeah. And they just... And right. what I love about that movie is... Because the Coen brothers are, are just like a great comic where... They're not going to be like, this guy knows what I'm talking about. Come on, back me up. They just go, fuck you. You figure it out. Yes. And we're not doing the same. Like, but that's Everybody sits around and they bitch. And they, you know, it's the same fucking movie over and over and over again. How many times do you make the same fucking movie? And then you do something different. And then they go, that ending sucks. Yeah. What the fuck? L- well, they want to see the guy get caught. Or I don't know what they want to see. They you don't see even see Josh showdown. Brolin. Spoiler alert. You don't even see what happens to him. You don't see it. You hear about it. In, in what movie was in that? In No Country. In No Country, yeah, yeah. You just hear about it. You also don't How see How funny his, is that? I'm so bad with the names. Yeah, his name is, um, it's a woman's name, Lu- Luann, Luellen. Luellen, Luellen, I know that. That's Luellen's truck, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't often see a Mexican in a city. That guy is like one of my favorite actors. I don't even know his fucking Josh name. Josh Brolin. I'm so bad at that. But he's one of those actors that just disappears. No, I can't remember. I'm really bad since using cell phones. I don't know what it is. Like <laughs> I, I can remember every football stat from the 70s, but I can't remember names of restaurants like with my girl I, I can't rem- I just all the restaurants that we go to regularly yeah. all have nicknames because I can't remember them the, like you mean the place with you know the... that place up the street that yeah, serves yeah, those yeah, giant yeah, yeah, pancakes yeah, yeah, yeah. that one's called Pancake Circus because yeah, yeah. they have the whipped cream on it and shit what, what's it called oh, you mean this is real I thought no, you were real. manufacturing one no, I don't know what that's called an, then the place I call Special Sandwich <laughs> <laughs> Pancake Circus let me spe- make a Special Sandwich <laughs> this is no, I have like name. I just I can't even remember the places. But if she brings up the name of a place, I just I know it's you not need the right. some sort of context. Well, I know it's not the right name at this point, obviously. So what I do is I just throw it out there, and it makes her laugh. Like I remember I was trying to remember the name of some movie, and I called it the the, the last days of Dracula, and it was the Tom Cruise Brad Pitt <laughs> interview with a vampire. Yeah, now, I knew it wasn't the last days of Dracula, but the last days of Disco had just come out. And I knew it was about vampires. You can't be bothered. Your brain can't be bothered remembering. No, this can't, stuff. Not, not can't be bothered. Can't like I seriously cannot fucking remember. Yeah, I have a terrible memory too. I've gotten in elevators with people that I know, and because they're wearing glasses, I don't recognize them. I'm like people are like, "Who would Clark Kent work for?" That disguise it would work on me. I'm oh, terrible yeah. with general information. Oh yeah, and you part the hair on the other side. Forget yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Superman had the worst fucking uh, co- <laughs> like, disguise yeah. ever. He got rid of the runaway cowlick and he put on glasses and a suit, and it was like, uh. That was another reason why I loved uh, Christian Finnegan in Batman. Whatever that actor's name is. Christian Bale. Christian Bale. Right? When he fucking... I love, I'd love to see Christian Finnegan as I love that, you know, that when he was talking the way he was. Yeah. When he was talking like this. Yeah. Because if I put on a three-quarter mask and you saw my yeah, jaw, yeah, 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 yeah. if I spoke yeah, the yeah, same yeah. way, you'd be like... Yeah. This is Bruce Wayne, Bill Burr. Yeah. <laughs> that's why that's... St- the, yeah. He actually had the brains to be yeah. like, this mask doesn't cover my whole fucking face. Right, right, right. I talk to these people on a regular it's basis. It's kind of ridiculous. He blacks out his eyes, but he doesn't... With makeup, but he doesn't right. black out his shit. Why not just go... We, we now know you're white. I know what it is. What? Because Gotham is a cold city. And back in the day, I remember wearing those ski masks. When you could wear a ski mask, pre-9-11 on my paper route, what happens is, is it, it, it freezes up. Your breath freezes on the mask. So he had the brains, Batman... <laughs> to cut open. To cut open that, to leave that open. Then he thought it was stupid if I just had this big thing here. We'll just we'll cut it across there. Yeah, well, you seriously, fi- you fucking figured it out from your paper route. That's what it is. So you're on. You know what's funny about you? Don't hate women. You do need a hug. I love this stuff so so much. But you yet. But there's a bunch of shit about women that drives me up the fucking wall. And, and right you now, do it, the these women goddamn like it. fucking divorce settlements are absolutely ridiculous. They're robbing these. Kobe's fucking wife when he cheated on her in in Denver. That relationship was over, and she hung around like some jaded cop trying to get her pension. Right. right? <laughs> and hung around. The second is ten years uh, divorce. Merry Christmas. Go fuck yourself. She gets 190 million bucks. I'm not saying that guys should be able to start families and leave women destitute, but there should be a 30 million dollar cap. You will- All right. <laughs> Stop acting like you were down the Staples Center helping him with his jump shot. You weren't. <laughs> all right? You haven't even won a game of Scrabble on TV. Dude, Tiger's wife just bought a $12 million house and was like, hey, change that to marble. Change that. You know what? Just knock the whole fucking thing down. She's a babysitter. She's a fucking babysitter 
with with a quarter of a billion dollars. It's fucking ridiculous. And there's no law against saying I love you when you really don't just because somebody's rich. I, and I swear to God, if this shit was happening to women, they would be considered victims. It happens to guys and they go, well, you know, you shouldn't have married her. Oh, well, hey, that's the law. That's the law. Hey, I could beat you with a fucking mop handle a hundred years ago and be like, that's the law. Doesn't mean it's it's right. You fucking cunts. How did you get here? See, there you go. That's how how did you get here? What? You just, that uh, piece of comedy is so funny. You, when you started comedy, what were you like? I was. I, I made fun of, hey, it's Ron Howard meets fucking Howdy Doody. Yes. Without the fucking. I wouldn't, I wouldn't curse at all. Totally clean. And were you writing at home? I understand. I, I oh, have to imagine. I wrote imagine. at home and I was standing on stage and there would be a teleprompter invisible going in my head and I completely <laughs> wasn't present. Right. Yeah. I just heard this great uh, interview when I was in Montreal. Louis said this thing about how uh, there's two sides of the brain and there's the side. Uh, one side of the brain is in charge of when we're just talking, like the way you and I are right now. And then there's another side that's reciting. So when you write something down, you're literally lighting up a completely different section of your brain. And it sounds artificial. I don't even have to ask. I just assume you write from stage now. It's fucking hilarious how smart that guy's. Right? Um, crazy. I just look at it like this is my <laughs> this is my mm. remedial way of how I figured that out. Uh, if something funny happened to me and I was going into a bar and I was going to tell my friends, I wouldn't write it down and then rehearse it in the mirror. <laughs> I would just go in and tell them. Right. And then what happens is, is like regular people have their funny stories and they know how they how they go. Right. Like, oh, oh, J- Jerry, tell the time right. when we got the flat on the turnpike. Right, and the right, guy right. will just launch into the stories. He knows where the funny is, but it's not written down anywhere. Right, right, right. Why would it be? So, you'd yeah. Be a so, so, you'd I be learned, a I learned from Tony V in Boston. I learned about that. And I learned when uh, working with Patrice, because Patrice early on would open with whatever he wanted to open with. And would switch stuff up. And every time, every time he tell you jokes, it's a little bit different. He goes, well, I just try to keep the essence of it. So I learned from those two guys. That's how good Patrice was. I learned from like a 15, 20-year vet and right. a guy who started six months after me. Right. Like that's how fucking good that guy was. I, I know. If I, I, when I was watching your special, it actually reminded me of Patrice's special. It has that same sort of truth telly, the sort of like hitting women stuff. You're, saying, you're going into these really uncomfortable areas. You talk about pedophilia. You know what I mean? You, right. Both of you guys had that sort of fearlessness. And I, I don't no, know. No, it's more like it was more, but it, but it was also like it's not like we, you know, you had the idea of it, and then you we went to New York City, and then there was Louis C.K., there was Dave Attell, there was Dave Chappelle. So you <coughs> learned from those guys, and right. then and then whatever your childhood was, that's how it seeped into like what you uh, what you talked about, right? I, I just going back to the idea of not writing it down. I used to think I was from the completely opposite school. When when I opened for you uh, years years ago in Peoria at Brewsters, at Brewsters in Peoria, oh, man, and they had that 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 whiskey barrel on stage. <laughs> yes, it was. It and looked, we went and we saw the ring. The ring, yeah. In a movie theater, it was just, just you, you. no one else was in the movie theater. It was you and me, and that movie scared the shit out of us. <laughs> yeah, and we both considered because remember you call and you go. Three days no, or seven, seven days. days. I yeah. really wanted to call your room and say seven days, but I was like, I don't want to freak him out. There, I remember everything from that trip. There was, there was a. I couldn't eat before the show, and here's something you said to me. One of the things I like to do on the show is recreate the advice that uh, great comedians has, have given me over the time. And one of the things was I was like, I can't eat. I'd only been doing stand up for like two years or whatever, two three years, and I was like, I was too nervous to eat before the show. And you were like, you just said as if you had thought about it a lot. You were like, that'll go away at five. You're like five years, you'll be fine. Yeah, because that's well, that's what happened with me. Isn't like that five great? In, yeah, now I could eat an entire. I could be eating a Thanksgiving dinner right before or during and your walk set. on. Yeah, yeah, and then I'll just open with how full I am. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is. And I shouldn't have ate that. I'm an idiot. Like, right. Yeah. That is so beautiful because if you can remember the anxiety and the stress when you're starting, the goal is to have your life be as normal as it can be while you're doing this really weird thing with right. your nights. So I, I was really stressed out about that. And then the night, I actually made a video called Pete Holmes Bombing from our weekend. And it's an editing – it's an edit of all the moments of the worst parts of my set, like dry mouth, uh, pandering, all these, all these different mistakes. You told me a couple things. You people – you said you people is, the, uh, is like calling the crowd the N-word. That's like the N-word for the, for the crowd. This is something I picked up from you. Uh, okay. Because if you, if you go like, I don't know what you people are doing. It's like – No, I don't, I don't use the word we. Oh, well, maybe I'm we... getting this wrong. Yeah, I think you were running for office, and they said if you're speaking in front of a black crowd, don't say you people. <laughs> <laughs> well, you people is definitely bad with a, a, a race room, but like, yeah, no, no, I definitely like. To, what does we mean? What tell me? Well, about if we. you really have an opinion on something, 
is uh, like say what I just had that that what I just said about divorce laws is as much as someone doesn't agree with what I just said who's listening to this sure. at no point was I talking at anybody that was just the, I, they could easily dismiss me as That's some so loud good. jackass because so, you're just talking about because I'm just saying what I think right so you know what was awesome at that was Robert Schimmel Robert Schimmel could talk about some of the bluest stuff I've ever seen but he would kind of look down like and he would it was almost like he was talking to himself and you were listening in and he was just you know I'm watching this porno Knocked the bottle over. He'd be like, you know, and I'm watching this porno, and this guy, you know, the dick, he's coming in her face, and he's just sitting there, like, <laughs> just really saying all these words that you're allegedly not supposed to say because you're going to lose the crowd, but everybody's laughing because it's almost like you were listening to his inner monologue. Right. And he wasn't like. Where does we come in? We is like, I, I learned that one night. I saw a comic at the, uh, at the comic strip, and I was watching him, and he was doing some bit about. And I just remember going, but do we do we want that? No. We want a country oh. where we can and I immediately it was just oh. I had like this this I want to say visceral reaction, but I can't yeah. define the word. Yeah, That's yeah, one of those yeah, words yeah. I heard enough people use where yeah. I can use it intelligently but can't define yeah. it. I had I had I had like it af- really fucking affected me. Like where I j- it just really turned me off and sure. I was like and I was like, I hate this guy right now because I actually liked him, but I was like, I hate this guy right now. Don't, right. don't tell me what I want. Right. And then, not, and, and then the whole bit was kind of saying that everyone in the country was stupid. So there was a way. It's like now you're calling me stupid. Right. And so, but it's not like you got to drop that bit. You can do the bit. Just keep me out of it. Right. You know what it's like? It's like a guy who cheats on his girlfriend. And brings her, and then does it in front of you, and then brings his fucking girlfriend down the next day, like drags you into it. And it's like, why would you do that? You know, you want to be a piece of shit, be a piece of shit. You want to think this? Think, don't fucking drag me into it. <laughs> That's fucking perfect. Yeah. Here's the the other thing that you told me uh, one night, the night that I bombed real bad. There was actually two. The one that I made the video was actually the better of two nights. And I got off stage and uh, oh, the week we worked. Yeah, the week. We yeah, worked. you bombed real bad one I did night. Bomb, I remember yeah, that. I bombed real bad, and I got off stage. First of all, thank you for being gracious and not just being like, "Fuck, can we switch this guy? <laughs> like, can oh. we get a new guy?" I have too much of a need to be liked to even do that to somebody who I would have thought was going to fail in comedy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, got, I got off stage in my stupid tight, overly tight new red Gap shirt, slicked back hair, fat black pants because that's what Orny Adams wore in comedian. I was like, "I'll wear black pants like right. comedians do," and I got off stage and. It's it's a horrible feeling. I don't know when the last time you've got seen a comedian bomb and get off stage and he just looks at you like he wants you to make it okay. It's a horrible thing. I actually stole what you did to me and I did it to somebody recently cuz you can feel the heat on them. Oh, the, oh they yeah. want you to yeah, say your something. Your body temperature goes up when, yeah. when, when bombing that bad. Yeah. And they and you and you're like and they'll they'll kind of bait you with things like I can't tell did I just bomb and you just want to be like yeah. Yeah. And it's a privilege. You know what I mean? Yeah. Good for you. You fucking bond. But what I said was, and this is what you said to me, you had both your hands out with all your fingers extended, and you went, you were looking for this, like clasping them together, and this is what happened, and you touched your fingertips together. Like, you just never connected with them. Oh, yeah. Because there's this weird music to it, the way you start, the way that you let them in, the way you appreciate You're really going Charlie pop. Rose with this shit, huh? Yeah, it's pitch black in this, in this <laughs> studio right now. <laughs> I'm just saying, you're just going like, But yeah. this is important stuff. There's Do you a... understand that you said that to me in the first three years of my stand-up? And, like, the, the reels are running. I'm recording it. When you're talking to young comics, that shit is carved on inside of me. You know what I mean? I was like, that's a thing that can happen when your words are just going into a vacuum and you're not connecting. Yeah, all you had to do at some point was stop <laughs> and address that's how badly said. you were bombing. That's what you, you said. And you never did it. And then it just became uncomfortable. Yes. And that's why I kind of like black crowds because if you don't address it, they address it. <laughs> and then the laugh. But then it's weird because then they make the laugh happen. So then you're still bombing. Uh, but, but they're still laughing uh, happening. Yeah, and then that that becomes weird. And then you start killing in like this alternate universe where they're they're laughing at you. Oh, that uh, sounds like a nightmare for a man who didn't want to get heckled going into the black circuit in the way that you have. It, it seems like an interesting choice. That's actually well enough- because it was just like, all right, I'm going to face this fear. Let's let's just go in as deep as I can go, and uh, and that's what it was. And then that was really hard at first, but then those rooms become really easy because once you figure out that uh, you're like the mascot <laughs> and that if you're actually even remotely funny, you get way more laughs 
than a black comic in those rooms that are twice as funny as you uh, because they're just it, you're not special. That's what you told me. You so then, are the exception. So then it becomes yeah. So that's why you know as a white comic you can't tell me you weren't you haven't been sitting there and you're watching a black comic bombing in front of a white crowd and to be like oh look at this white lady over here grabbing her purse she thinks I'm ah, and goes that and, and everybody dies oh they start yeah. beatboxing <laughs> to get out of it and everybody's like oh my god that's so urban the white comics can't do that and and they're, but they're doing the hackiest shit ever right. and you're like do you say I'm the only macadamia nut in the cookie yeah I know like that exactly like the uh, <laughs> gee gee was I scared coming up here I did all of that so then when <laughs> when I, 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 what I would do is, so then it became like, okay, now I've gotten over the fear of doing these rooms. Now can I open with something that doesn't involve me addressing that I'm the only white guy here or that uh, some, some, you know, racial or a story about getting mugged, like that story that the, the, I'll let go of my neck that yeah, always yeah, yeah. killed in the black rooms. Yeah. So I had like these crutch bits that I could do um, that like, you know, that there's, there's a formula for any room. Like, take the alternative rooms that you do. You can write a 20-minute bit on Micronauts, and you know that's going to kill. What's a Micronaut? You know, those little robot things that guys like you played with before. Uh, you know those little <laughs> they, they're like trans, they were like the original Transformers. <laughs> Micro but, machines, perhaps. But you know that you can do that or go up yes. there and sing some bad song from the 70s We talked about this. Alt hack. We talked yeah. about this. There's a hack yeah. for every room. Yeah. I kind of have issues with alt rooms. I want to, I'd love I to really talk I really do, about because... It. Because I, I felt like but you, you uh, do they, them. they somehow you I do them all. Up, you come up in every conversation. No, no, this is, the thing. I have. this is the thing though. We all go Burr, Louis, Gaffigan. In fact, I have an email from Can you. Can I get on with trash in the alt rooms before yeah, you go I, to I, your I, newspaper yeah, yeah, yeah. here? <laughs> I want I want you to thing. trash. The I don't like but you do how both. you do both. Yeah. That like it, 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 there was this fucking vibe coming from the alt side. We're like even written on like people's CD going. This isn't this isn't a bunch of guys working on airline material. Who uh, said that? On, on a, Where on, was on, that? On a Letterman for a Letterman audition. Uh, how the fuck did it go? Uh, Is this an article you read? No, this was in the inside liners of some alt guy's fucking CD. Well, fuck that forever. You so, can't... no no fuck you. Because okay. <laughs> so, you're part of that scene. So it became I... like so it became this thing like all the hack guys were in the clubs going, what's the deal with? And I started I... going those those alt rooms. And after a while, I go, there's the hacky shit that you can do in here. Everybody's fucking awkward. Buddy, Everybody does that. You I'm know? right there with you, singing your punchline. Unicorns, nah. ninjas. These are our hack things. All that type of shit. And then this is another thing I hate. <laughs> You don't, think that, everybody, you don't think we're on the same side. Everybody fucking blows those audiences down at UCB. Like, they're so smart. Everybody down there is so uh, fucking smart. It's like, dude, UCB is the nerd blue collar tour. It's nerds performing <laughs> for fucking nerds. You all grew up on the same block. And then it's just like, wow, you think everything I think is funny. You guys are so smart. And then you go down to the Laugh Factory because there's a guy, a mechanic, who can tear a car down and build it back up again. All of a sudden, he's a fucking moron. I, I was at the Laugh Factory He, he doesn't ago. laugh at your Wolverine bit. Give me a fucking break. There's just as many hacks in your room as there uh, are in mine. Go fuck yourself. I, am, I couldn't agree more. In oh. fact, it's come you know, up on you know, the you know, show before. You know how boring that is? What, so agreeing? You just sit here and agree with me. Why don't you fight me back? And then, this is the thing, another thing, too. <laughs> Is those rooms were started I by do, club comics, by the way? Which I know, Marin, Janine, all that sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah, all these beasts. But they, this they is, were this started is by, we, this, and they created a cocoon for the pussy generation Nick to come. And I don't want to, I don't want to get heckled. Yes. I just everybody just yeah. know what I know, and then I'll talk about it. <laughs> and then when you laugh, I'll curl up into a ball. Go I've, fuck yourself. Yeah, it's like I, it's, I almost want to disagree with you. You better, guys are all. Only you guys are missing in those rooms are wearing helmets and like padded <laughs> elbows. Fat up the knee, corners, knee, knee pads and shit. Baby proof the room. Yeah, give me a break. Now, now, obviously, I went way further than I should have. Yeah, no, but, but you I know. But, but you know this what is I mean. ex- I'd love to talk about this. Your perspective is is is. Uh, I think is correct. There's a hack everywhere. This is what yes. I've said on the show before. Uh, Nick Kroll, I think, when we were talking about it, was like, "Oh, I made a, a room full of people who share my entire life experience and worldview laugh." So he's a, yeah. He's I talked to him the other day, and he was going, "I'm going to start doing the clubs." I'm like, "That's exactly what you should do." You he know what does. you should do? You should go do go do the fucking black rooms. That's what you should do. Yeah, you should go do go go from that, and then go down into that, well, and then you will become uh, instantly you'll 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 have like like. This this unbelievable knowledge, and I'll tell you, in 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 the black, all those rooms, there's the hack that you can do. As a white comic, you do the hack in that. As a black comic, all of them. So it's basically about avoiding doing that in whatever room you're in. But to sit there and you know, like fucking DeRosa one time was telling me about some room 
in Brooklyn going, that is the greatest night of comedy in the country or something like that. I'm like, dude. Oh, you it, mean Union Hall? I don't know what it was. I'm like, dude, it, it isn't. I'm going to go down there, and it's going to be just like any other comedy show. There's going to be 10 comics. Two guys are going to be oh, – two comics are going to be fucking great. There's going to be another six people trying to get to their level, and then there'll be like two or three where you're like, who the fuck ever yeah. told you you were funny? Who told you you could you work with men? It's going to be the same – Yes. Same thing. Well, th- right, this I'm is off something- my stool. No, th- this is why I wanted you on the show, man. We've talked about this. Every time it's come up on the show, I'm like, I, I-, I kind of want to just save this for Burr. This is my theory. Clubs are weight training. These rooms are cardio. And you see the meatheads that can only do the clubs, that can only g- see a Jewish guy in the front and go, you're from Brooklyn? You know what I mean? Just like that sort of shit. Right. And then you see the guys that can only do the Micronauts bits. Right. It's wrong to have your allegiance to any of these places. It's funny. Guys like you, who I love and respect, but whenever I do the Laugh Factory, they, they go like, what kind of like, what are you doing here? You belong over there. And when I'm here, sometimes people are like, oh, Pete's here. He's, he's not at, at a club. Like, kind of like in high school, I don't belong to the jocks or the nerds. This is, this is something that you taught me. You got to be able to yeah, do you both. Yeah, you got you, and you got to be Pete Holmes. Every time. And, and yeah, if you're, if you're doing the, uh, I always call it mixed nuts. What the fuck is it called now? Comedy union? Or if you're doing UCB, yeah. you're doing the store, you're doing, because even the store, the Laugh Factory and the Improv have different vibes to them. Like the Laugh Factory is, it's really well lit. Yep. They, a lot of young people there. It's like a totally different, uh, you almost feel like you're doing a TV taping. Comedy store is dark and evil, which of course yeah. that attracts yeah, I just love that place. Uh-huh. And then the improv is sort of a mix of both Between. of those where um, the evil is a little stealth there. And there's definitely a lot of young sort of vibe. But I like all of those clubs for uh, for different reasons. And I like going down to the UCB to do stand up because it's such a specific crowd. So it's so easy to piss people off <laughs> with <laughs> and it's you know, it's you think, you think no, but it's them? so easy to feel crass in those rooms like which is so much fun to just sit there and be like these fucking broads but I mean, just saying that like like me saying fucking broads like i say it because it's funny it's like right. a throwback it's like what, what was i like driving a bus in the 50s right. it's just funny yeah yeah so this comes you, up all the time but, i love but the if word you broad. say it in like the ucb there's it's like, edgy it's not even edgy it's just like they look at him like they look at me like i uh I just feel like that 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 kind of vibe of like, oh my god, did this guy grow up in the sewer <laughs> or something like like I'm this uneducated. I mean, I am an idiot to a certain extent, but you know, there's just something uh, like that shit that you say that how you start out with a joke. Like it's funny to start off with an over the top statement to get like ten fifteen percent of the people to be like, what what, what, is, what is he saying? Yeah. and then. So they're not so And then to try to, to bring them around. Well, it's also a great way to get people to listen. Yes, that's what I, like it, it knocks them out of their whatever they're frozen into. Now they're uh, yeah, if they're like texting or like texting is fucking brutal though because people zone out. But I, I, I would know. say like back in the day when someone was talking, a great way to get them to listen is uh, is you just start like say that dog bit that I did. All right, on my last special, I started off making fun of shelter dogs so that uh, people love dogs so immediately they're going and i know the end of it yeah i mean i had the shelter dog bit in the beginning because i hated that commercial because it made me feel guilty right and then i had that bit for six months and then i ended up getting a rescue dog a found dog is how i call them um <laughs> found it by a river um is that true yeah <laughs> my girl got it and then it was a pit bull the whole fucking thing so um <laughs> So then I, I so I kept the making making fun of that uh, that shelter dog thing, and then I had this whole new experience with with she got a pit bull, and I was afraid of the pit bull, so I kept all of that. So there was a good six seven minutes of me just sort of trashing shelter dogs or being afraid of pit bulls and everything. So right. fucking animal people in the crowd were just like livid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it brings around that me falling in love with this pit bull, and it's just like right. It's kind of how you can. Get people like they're mad, but they won't. Like, I never got into that whole walk in the crowd. It's like, I want to try to make you mad, but I want to make you stay. Yeah. If you leave, then you leave. Then, yeah. Well, then the game's over. And it's like, I can't annoy you anymore. You, 
<laughs> you you walk right, out. Right. You kind of do it with the the pedophilia thing, which is a weird way to start your CD. Uh, that's on um, what's it called? It's called Why Do I Do This? Why do I do this? Why yes. do I, which is fucking unbelievable? It's unbelievable. I'm sorry, I'm gonna butter your bread more. It's unbelievable. And you open with a pedophilia. We are going to talk about something other than comedy, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. It's like because th- I got to let you know, people do this on on all podcasts at this point. Yeah, it's comics sitting there talking to other comics about comedy. Yeah, which I will do. This is like for Nick fucking Kroll, ever. Every, yeah, but everybody is doing it. So at some point, you want to talk about you know global warming or some other yeah. shit. I'm but I mean, it. like uh, you know, we're in the, the hardware store. I'm going to pick up some hammers. I'm talking to a okay. fucking comedian. You know uh, what I mean? Like we're going to get into some other stuff. But this okay. is. In fact, the show, I, t- I pride the show on going into some weird areas. That's why it's called You Made It Weird. But, man, there's just so much I want to talk to you about this stuff. So, uh, but fuck, I just forgot what you we were said, talking about. You said, why do I do this? You started off with the pedophilia thing. Oh, you do the was... pedophilia thing. and then, Thank you very much. And then, and then you're doing it, and I can feel the crowd being like, what is, what is this guy's take on pedophilia? You're kind of like, I'm done. It's not everywhere. Fucking take it easy with the pedophilia. And then you, you bring it into, I love kids. I love making faces at kids. Everyone relates to that. Suddenly, right. you started this bit and we're you break, uneasy. If we break this down anymore, like my whole ex will become be a party trick. I know. Like, oh, I know, this is what I he's know. doing. This is what he's doing. I know. There's a, there's a weird... Uh, I, I say this on the show all the time. If you want the song, don't dissect the goose. You know what I mean? Like, don't cut yeah. into the bird. You'll kill no. the bird. It's so, not like what I do let, let me, all the time. No, it's, I know. It's, it's like... A, it's, it is like... A, well, stand up after a while once you've learned how to kill... Then it becomes like, how deep a hole can I dig and still crawl out of yeah. it? Or else you're just bored shitless. It's masochistic. You want to yeah. see how far you can push them and get back. That's a, right. that's a phenomenon for comedians. You, you, something else that seems to be happening. You're, you're very... Having said that, I believe everything I say. <laughs> you have a lot. Is that my water, by the way? Yes, it is. Nice. Thank you. I got you a smart water. Smart that's L.A. Water. water, man. Get into it. You have a Fresh lot of... the L.A. River. Right? Yeah, that would, that would kill you. This is, uh, you have a lot of rage. A lot of rage. This Which is we, I, I've really worked on. Yeah, you wouldn't. You wouldn't know. I, you know, last night. What do you I, mean worked on trying I'll to get you, minimize I'll tell you it? What, I'll, yeah, I'll tell you what. Like last night, I was putting together. I, I ordered this. Uh, I'm really into like just lifting yourself with your own body weight. You don't need to go to the gym. Just hike, eat well, like prison. And then, then do like uh, no, pull ups, push ups. Yeah, no, not like prison, but like prison. Like like. Yeah, pull-ups. Okay, like okay. yoga. Yeah. Like, like Pilates. There you go, yeah. Yeah. Like sharing your feelings. <laughs> <laughs> it's either prison or yoga, man. Those are the two uh, groups that it. are doing yeah, that. Yeah, 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 you're on this side of the fence or the other. So I bought one of those. Uh, I live in this place now. I got this funky little garage, and I, I bought this place. I, I bought this uh, this. What you, like a, it's a pull-up dip station thing. Yeah, I know what you, you're you talking about. You know those things. Yeah. So, you can wrap it around the door or you can do push-ups on no, it. No, no. This is like the stand up, standalone thing. Oh. Yeah, and it was only like 130 bucks, man. Really? It's fucking good. So, dude, I sat there, right? And like, I just used this thing as an exercise to not lose my shit. So I'm in the garage. <laughs> you're burning off rage. I, I got my dog. No, no. And I just, this is what I do before I start. The old me would just start building the thing. And then be like, where the fuck are all the screws? And I would flip out. What I do is I lay everything out. I take inventory. I, do, I did all of that stuff. None of it really made sense. The instructions were fucking horrible. Yes. There was like a typo on one of them. So the, already the instructions were horrible. Forget about my inability to do this. So those, both of those combined that I had to put this thing together in sections and then take it apart again and realize that I fucked up. Right. It took me – I started at 840 and by the time I was done with cleaning up and everything, it was one in the morning. Really? I'm not even, I'm not even joking. Really? And uh, I only lost my shit once. I lost my shit on the, on the very <coughs> first step. I was screaming about the machinist who was out drinking beers, who didn't give a fuck. That's, I, I created this whole backstory <laughs> while I'm sitting here with this thing. And well, I that's what, like, that's what and we... I was just like, what am I doing here? Right. This is stupid. And I just sort of chilled. And then what I did, what I'm trying to do is learn how to laugh at myself so I don't. Uh, so I, 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 I don't. You know, I want to be angry. Yeah. Joe DeRosa has some bit about some guy schooling him on not getting angry at an inanimate object, and that was something he did that yeah. stuck with me, like subconsciously. Like I didn't even like I listened. To him. I'm like, hey, you know, it's a good joke. You know, that's fucking funny. But blah, blah blah blah. Like the usual shit. Just laugh. I, I think he's fucking hilarious. So I, I love just, Joe. Yeah. Like there's. Uh, he's just fucking. He's he's just funny. And then I I like yeah. his point of view. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just something I just laughed at. When he did it, but it didn't really. I was just looking at superficially, like, oh yeah, I get mad at shit, and I've yelled, and people like, hey man, calm down. Yeah. And then just one day, I was putting something together, and like his his joke popped into my head, 
about not getting mad at an inanimate, an inanimate object. Yeah. So, and then of course, and what the is first, that the, the first six times I was like, you know what, fuck Joe DeRosa. Ah, I'm still getting now mad. You're mad at him too. Yeah, I'm mad at his joke. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. Mad, I'm mad at the guy in yeah. his joke. You're mad at words yeah. and a fake person. No, I was basically just saying that it's a fucking inanimate object. There's right. no reason to have this level of rage. And that, so you're trying just, to laugh at yourself. Like when I fuck up, yeah, and I, you know, and you just sit there going, you know, I had a fifty-fifty chance. You know, there's a couple of pieces that it, it didn't really have top or bottom on it, right? Like say, and of course, like I could say, you know, I had a fifty-fifty chance of putting that in right, right. Even the fact that I didn't know, and I still put it in wrong. Right, right, and the, right. where it was is I had to take three other things off yeah, and put yeah, it back yeah. on. And so This feels very Ikea to me. I've been there. No, it was, it was beyond Ikea. Worse, this this was you needed two crescent wrenches torquing in different directions. Like This was like... <laughs> Torque is a verb. Loved huh? it. Loved it. Is that a verb? Yeah, I, it, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. it is. It is. I, so, well, well this, is, this is how the podcast started. Is that it, I was coming in... And these people are shooting, and they were shushing, shushing us as we were going. I just realized how dumb stairs. I just sound. You, I, you go torquing as a verb, and I go, "Is it a verb?" Yeah. No, well, the way you used it, stupid. Think, yeah, no, no. <laughs> well, see, okay, in a rage, and then I had this rage toward these people where they were like, "Be quiet!" And in my head, all they did was shush because they're shooting something. In my head, I've already had every argument with them. I've yelled at them, and I've been like, "You didn't clear with us. Uh, yep. you, we didn't clear with you." Catastrophizing. More people are going to hear our, this podcast than are going to see this piece of shit. You know what I mean? Like yeah. mean shit. Do you know who I am? Yeah. Ex- oh God, the <laughs> ego, the fucking swinging dick from Country of Old Men yeah. of, of a. Of a Comedian, just like fuck you. This is my house. You're in my. You're shooting in my. And then, of course, I'm just like, oh yeah, I'll keep it down, no problem. But then, what I'm wondering is, is that did the stage become the first place that you could really let out? You have a lot of anger towards yeah. humanity in general. These bovine motherfuckers eating at Cheesecake Factory, slothing about, contributing nothing. These are things you say, not inventing anything. You don't have the, it in Jesus, your genes. I don't remember saying that. I said all that. You say, you say, stop having kids. You've had three shitty kids. You clearly don't have the DNA to make a special one. Oh, You're just yeah, going to have another that. one. And then, oh, I fucking was dying. And then I realized what I was laughing at was the, was the worldview of the Illuminati. <laughs> Like, minimize the population, get it yeah. down to, like, 30,000 people. You know what the problem is, is I think that they're going to treat it, the minimizing the population, unfortunately, uh, I really believe this, is, it's going to be treated like a term paper, where it's going to be done the night before. And what you, what, ra- what? Rather than just going, like, <laughs> just getting on TV and risking scaring the shit out of everybody, yeah. and say, look, there is a finite amount of people that can exist on this world, and there will be enough water. Yeah clean air and and food to eat okay right why don't we just chill with babies and and yeah but the thing is you're you're gonna deal with all that whole religious backlash of of the the lunacy fruitful and multiple of like i that that, that, how you can't question you can't question religious people they absolutely lose their fucking minds well that's one of the things why i like science it blows my mind because I'm so dumb, and I, I still don't understand how a plane stays off the ground. I get how it gets off, like I can, but I come back immediately. I don't get that. S- it's like surfing on the air. Everybody's trying to explain it to me the lift. I still don't yeah. get it. But what I like about science is science can be questioned. Yeah, and, you know, and there's egos, and people will fight you and say you're full of shit and that type. But it, but you can pr- disprove something that was considered right um, way easier. Yeah. In, in a much quicker time, and it'll change its mind. It, it's yeah, open to the and, idea, and and, and then it's the thing. it was never canonized. And when, Science and when was never you, canonized. And when you do, is and you you have facts, and you change it with facts. Right. It's not like well, and, do you know what I mean by that? Reli- the, the religion, uh, the canonization of the Bible was when they decided this is the Bible. It was a council. We're t- we're looking at scripts and stuff that had been written for hundreds, maybe thousands of years. If you're looking at the Old Testament, and then a, a group of people got together. I don't know the year, and they made the canon, meaning what the Bible is. And they're like, this is it. It's done forever. Then they can find a transcript. Which is so stupid because that, that's it, like that would be like you as a comedian going like I I am done right d- developing right like I'm not gonna it's not I'm, open it's I'm, not I'm, I'm not moving on it's to, fro- any, to anything else yeah I, yeah it can't it can't be moved even yeah. if they find an older version of First Peter let's say this sort of stuff happens they find an older script and it's different I've said this on the show before they had Goliath at 13 feet or something in the Bible the Bible if you went to Barnes and Noble and read it now and then they found like an older version that was like saying it was more like my height that's that's you know a pretty big difference oh I think that's bullshit I think he was a 13 foot man <laughs> <laughs> it's just fucking 
Half the, half of those stories should be painted on the inside of a cave. <laughs> you know what I mean? Com. I'm just saying. This- Look, the basis of all religions is awesome. And I actually enjoy going to church the, the few times a year I go. Do it reminds me to be a good person. Sure. It gives me a sense of community. I like all of that stuff. But the fucking stories <laughs> and the guilt trip of my religion is... Is you have to be like, look, uh, I'm, well, you, no, no, I, I'm not going to put it on everybody else. Just for me, the way it hits me is I just see it as, you know, you, you guys are just trying to scare the shit out of me. And it, and you don't you don't know what happens when we die. I don't give a fuck. You don't know. You don't know. It makes no sense that God. And this is a hacky bit right here because a bunch of guys have done it. It, it makes no sense that God was talking to people. On a regular basis, as a burning bush, right? You know, and then he said to this guy, "Hey, you better do this." So this is going to happen, and all of a sudden he just stopped. Well, this, this is one of those. Bi- you have a bit about this that also just kind of went into my brain and has been there forever. And I say it all the time, and I reference it, and I quote it. You know, giving you credit, of course. I go when you go to church and there's some guy up there preaching. Your thought is, it's just some guy. It is. It's, it's a, he guy. likes soccer. I don't know why that's such a funny example. Yeah. This is some guy who likes soccer. <laughs> and then you have that other bit where you're like, you're telling me not to jerk off. It's my dick, right? Yeah. That's, I, these, these are like religious bits to me. I don't, I, don't, I don't buy into the whole thing that there's this guy who's mad at me. A conscious God judging you actively. Yeah, because if I'm fucked up, isn't it his fault? It's like he made me. Like, I feel like I'm, I'm like, a, a, like a Fiat or like a car. You know those yeah, cars fiat. that you just always have to keep fixing? Yeah. Like, you know, when it goes back <laughs> You're to a fiat. when it goes back to the plant, to like the auto workers yell at the car. It's yeah. like you built it. Yeah, that's you so built it. So like when I'm so that's why I think they created like the devil. They create the the devil, so then you can be like, well, the devil made him do it, right? And, like I just don't understand why if you had the ability to throw a lightning bolt down <laughs> and eliminate bad people, why pedophiles? Right. Are allowed to walk around, right. do what they do, go to jail, get out, do, do it, it again. again. I mean, you're looking for a yeah. little bit more hands on of a god. Well, I mean, the, no, just the god that they're describing that is going to be right. wrathful. Well, that and was Jesus is coming back and right. he's going to be mad. And I just that remember was... being like seven, eight years old, going, "What the fuck are all these people so goddamn mad at me for? What have I done?" And like, I started looking at my life, like, "Oh my god, what am I doing?" It's like I'm in third grade. Yeah, I'm not doing anything. Right. Well, that that was one of the things that I remember debating. I went to religious school, and one of the things that I remember, I knew this kid, and he had a theory that God wasn't all-powerful. Because of the fall of man, he can't do everything that he'd like to do because the world is so fucked. So people will go to great lengths to like explain pain, pain man, right. and explain all the, all this different sorts of loss and stuff. I don't like any of that shit where they, they – I don't like how the, the lack of respect for an animal's life – and then we're like, but God create us, created us in, in his image. Yeah. So basically, we're, we're like God light. Right. And just the, the, the ego behind there that. There is it's a just, huge it, ego. The whole fucking well, thing That's actually interesting. The, the Mormon religion was one of the first things that really made me start uh, kind of questioning all of it. Because I was like, oh, that feels like a religion that you would make up. And I don't want to upset. Well, see, see, I can't be like you. I'm just it speaking all, for it me. All, it, it all seems like there's a... The the, you, the 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 human touch is so all over because right. every, every first of all everybody thinks they're right and everybody considers you know God loves everybody but we're the chosen ones right like the, God loves me best that whole fucking attitude yeah, is yeah, what yeah. well the, the builds more... up like uh, I, I would love to say that if there was no religion there would be no wars but that's not just that's not how human beings I don't think are made up right. I really don't no I don't think that's true either how fucking deep into this shit are we right now like we're the like two philosophers <laughs> like if you. People so, love like, knucklehead philosophers. Oh, okay. As long, yeah, yeah. As, long as it's framed as knucklehead yeah, yeah. We are two knuckleheads. I'm all over. Uh, you have a, another over. wonderful bit where you're like, I'm full of shit. I'm why drinking is anyone smart listening water, to me? people. Yeah, why is anyone listening to me? Well, the more uh, the, my understanding of uh, what I've studied about the Mormon religion is that heaven is like becoming like a god. You get your own planet and you have your celestial brides and you fuck and you populate the planet and you become like God. 
This is my understanding. I'm sure there are different Mormons that have different interpretations. Oh, this is how the Mormons do it? But this is how I was told. And when I was told that, I was like, that sounds suspiciously like the best idea ever. That sounds like a P. Diddy video back in the yeah. day. Huh? <laughs> I have and my then, own planet. I got my own planet, what? dog. What? Yeah, spitting crystal yeah, up. Exactly. Because I'm a god. I'll create some more. That, I mean, that's the original. That's like the story of the Garden of Eden, wanting to be like God. And they were just like, no, you will be like God. The way that God is today, one day you, you will be, but God will also keep progressing. So you'll never be as good as him, but you'll catch up to him, but he'll always keep moving forward, too. This is how it was explained to me. So I was it's like, like trying to catch up with David Tell. Exactly. Or Louis. That's what I, I would, would love. Say. Yeah, Louis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like you're never going to catch those. Guys. You're also one of those. Com- not to bring it back to comedy, but uh, you're one of those guys. I don't like watching you. I watched you to research for this because I'm like, oh, he scorched the fucking earth. Pedophile. Gone. Can't. Nope. Can't do a bit about that. No. And it feels a little way. bit like, look, I'd like to think I could go in the mine and find something that you left behind which is a Brian Regan quote. He loves going in those familiar topics, airline, food, whatever. And fi- he has some fucking hilarious Dude, that guy, that guy airline material. The, He'll the, do two shows in one night, do like two different like, yeah, the hours. Yeah, and the, the A and the B set. And people will come to both. Ah, he's fucking unbelievable. And, and talk about underrated. I know, I yeah, know. He's like reverse Tim Tebow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like Tim Tebow was getting so much hype last week because he because he, he actually threw passes that an NFL quarterback should throw. Right. Like, and here's Brian Regan doing two separate hours. <laughs> two separate hours. <laughs> right. And 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 like, if you wear a silly hat and you get a catchphrase, you can get like, you yeah. Know, you can really. I mean, I'm oversimplifying it, nope. but like, I feel like that guy. Um, I I don't I don't get it. I don't How get did why. You, well. Let, I'd love to have him on the show. How did you... I think if you're just like a nice guy, you're not going, look at me, look at me, look at me. Like, right. But he has hordes of huge fans. He and, does. And sells out theaters. I know, but I'm stuff. so sick of people with their fucking lists. Yeah. Okay. You mean the list of the best guys? Yeah. Leaving off Regan? Yeah. It's a big it, problem. It, it's ridiculous. When I met him, I, I have a big story about that I've told on the show before, but one of the things I said, I was like, every working comedian that's successful today should write you a handwritten thank you note, because I feel Regan on everybody. Dude, I, I like... I, I would say, is, is far you know, we've already mentioned the guys, the, the Tells, Louis C.K.'s, Dave Chappelle. Yeah. But, but Brian Regan is, it, it, you can't do it any better yeah. than that guy. And it, by like, his own terms, oh he's doing God, it his way. He's the first real headliner, like, like touring headliner I ever saw. I saw him at Nick's Comedy Stop, and I never saw anybody kill wire to wire the way he did. Oh, I, he, he had like... I just remember seeing this woman. I never forgot. She was slumped over in the chair next to her. Like, you would have thought she just had a heart attack and died if she wasn't, like, shaken from yeah. laughing. Like, like, <laughs> you would have like, she like, died. Do you, do you know, like, how hard you have to make somebody laugh that they, like, <laughs> fall over, you know? Uh, I, I mean, love that. And, and, you know, I used to say a white person, to make a white person fall yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, Def yeah. Jam, yeah, Def yeah, Jam. Yeah. They Black just, people are better at comedy and magic. They, they, they no, love. but they, they, no. But black oh, I understand Audience what you're members saying. will run out of the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And do They'll like, run it white, off. White people are really, you really got to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To get a white person. We got that puritanical guilt. It's, if, it's, if, it's you, if you can make a white person stomp their feet. Yeah. A black person would have passed out yeah, of that yeah, joke. Yeah. <laughs> Well, th- this is interesting. The idea of Regan getting... I remember seeing him the last time he did Caroline's, and he was like, and I'm only going to do theaters, all the all this stuff. It's interesting. Here you are doing theaters and such. I remember the, the name of the show is... In certain, you- certain areas. I, I will always do the clubs. Clubs at the gym, you got you to keep... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, well, that's interesting. I, I say that like I knew that, but <laughs> why did I agree with that? Because you want to be liked. I know. Fuck Normal. Me, fuck me forever. But anyway, I'm always interested <laughs> in the philosophy of success. You are... A comedian. You're a fucking comedian, man. Did you know that when you were a kid? Were you like, nothing else is going to fit? You know no, what I mean? No, I was an idiot. I kept... <laughs> I, it, it was like, everything that I wanted to do, I wanted to do and be... I'll be a cop, but I'll be the funny cop who pulls you over. And everything... And I still, I still couldn't, couldn't figure it out. I couldn't figure it out. It's so, it was so ridiculous. Like, right. I, I had memorized all these Carlin and Pryor albums. And I used to ride around doing my paper route. Um, and I would be doing the bits, pretending I was doing them in front of my class, yeah, making everybody laugh, and I still wasn't able to be like, so that means... Right, right, right. This like, is a calling for me. Yeah, like if I was on the uh, $10,000 pyramid and someone was giving me clues, like I would... I, I, next one, pass. Oblivious. Pass, yeah. But still fan- like a rich fantasy about thinking about what it might like 
uh, be like yeah. to be a comedian. It did, and it didn't seem possible because I came from a jock town and there really wasn't a lot of artsy stuff going on. It was like really like a blue collar. You fixed stuff. You played sports. Uh, you drank. And it was all. It was an, I, an awesome town, right? Um, but it was a little light on the artsy stuff. Sure. And uh, so it makes it even harder to like say I'm going to do something. Di- I'm going to do this weird thing. Yeah. And it, and also like entertainment was so far away. Yeah. I mean, this is like. I mean, I guess the internet technically was around, but the, the YouTube videos, like none of that was on, going on. Yeah. Um. So you were just sitting in your parents' house with just this fantasy right. of doing it. So. There were no T- yeah. TV seemed like a zillion miles away, so I got a job in a warehouse, and I worked with a guy who also loved stand up the way I did. And we were, I was over at his house one day, uh, drinking before we went out. That was the Boston thing. Get a, get a good buzz going pregame, you know. So when we don't have to pay as many drinks, you know, just you know, start the night off with drinking and driving. That, that's how we're going to build this night, and then we're going to see what happens four hours later. Oh no, God! So we were watching like stand up spotlight. And, and we were just watching this, and the guy was just going, look at these guys. He goes, you guys, we're funnier than these guys. Yes. And he wanted to do it. And he said, one of these nights, I'm going to take a shot at Jack, and I'm going to go up on stage. And then all of a sudden, it wasn't on TV. Now it's sitting next to me. And I'm just like, going, you're going to do it? Yeah, man. And I was like, well, fuck, man. Maybe I should think about doing it. And that was right around that time I heard that if you don't go after what you want, you're going to regret it for the rest of your life, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. And that just <laughs> stuck in my head, and I was like... Uh, I just made a New Year's resolution. I was like, I'm going to try it sometime this year. That's how nervous I was. I and gave myself a whole year. And the second I made that, promise to myself, like like three weeks later, there was like stand-up comedy competition. It just kind of popped. It's like, yeah. you know, I need a mattress. And all of a sudden, you see all these billboards of it. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It like pops out at you. So yeah. I immediately went home. And I immediately called the number before I chickened out, and, yeah. uh, and, that, and that was it. I Isn't mean. that funny? You, you, when you have the nerve, that's when you got to strike. I remember uh, the comedy studio, some a place we both perform. I called Rick Jenkins before I, I had that same feeling of like I got to dial it right now, or, or I'm I won't, never going to do it. I won't. Yeah. Never going to. And then when I moved to Chicago, I walked past the place that said Comedy Mondays every day. On my way to my shit job, not that it wasn't that right. shit, Bennigan's. But I was no, like, I know that you know, that feeling as you're walking, going, I want to be in that yeah, world. Yeah, and you get like excited, like you're walking into dumps. Like it's still to this day, like I still have that 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 like I don't know, just seeing the mic in the mic stand before yeah. the show. I still like looking at that. Like I still like uh, I still have that nerd. Yeah, thing about uh, about stand up, and but with that, let's, it's, it's let's actually go to global warming. Yeah, it's actually kind of similar to the religion thing. Actually, is like what helped you become a comedian and helped you build this worldview about comedy was seeing that it's just some fucking guy. It's yeah. your friend, and he's gonna do. And you're like Richie from right. Revere. Yeah, he, he's gonna. Do he's it, yeah. some guy. The comedian on stage, like the pastor, is just some guy. And whenever people ask me. How do you start comedy? I don't say do an open mic. I say go to an open mic, and your belly will fill with fire, and you'll be like, "I'm, I, I could do this yeah. as well or better." And yeah. then, and then you realize it's just the same knucklehead. Sometimes it's the guy that was yeah, working. And then you the just door. start doing it, and then all of a sudden you get five bucks gas money, you get twenty bucks, you yeah, get fifty bucks. Let me, it's really like baby steps. So then that, it becomes funny when once you become a working comedian, and then uh, when younger comics come up to you. And they're they're asking you all those questions in in the back of your head. You're just like I'm some shithead from a warehouse. Yes, you know what I mean. And then you start going. And then you start thinking like God, how did I how did I get well, to that... be the guy? They go, how do you get into this shithole room? <laughs> yeah. And then you then then you, the, the next level is God. I'm old because ah. then they start going. I remember I was in fourth grade and they got like a full beard. I was in the fourth grade and I saw you on Conan. And like, oh my God, how old are you? And they'd be like, 31. Right. I've been oh. doing it eight years. Oh God. And I was like, you start doing the math and you're just like, holy shit, I did Conan in 99. This kid was, you know, that was 13 years ago. Yeah. Fuck. Wow. But this is something I wanted to talk to Gaffigan that I regretted not asking him about. Bridging being a comedian, doing the clubs in New York. You had some TV opportunities. You were doing different spots and stuff. But bridging that gap between that guy and uh, fucking you and fucking Gaffigan, these guys. And, you know, Regan is certainly a different thing. But, like, people are into it. Did you have a strategy to be like, the hour special is going to tip me? I know that's a weird question. No, I just had, I just love doing stand up and, and I, you know, I was out here 
earlier in my career and I was auditioning and just like, I just remember the auditions felt like they got in the way of my day because I just wanted to go down to the fucking Laugh Factory and I just wanted to try out my new bits. That's all I wanted to do. Yeah. That's really what I wanted to do. And I just finally was just like, you know what? You know, I, I got to go back to New York because I went to New York and I booked, I booked a short-lived sitcom. Townies. Yeah. And I got on that thing. And it came and it went, and then that fucked up my head where I was just like, oh, I have to be on a sitcom or else I don't feel like I'm successful. And I felt everyone was looking at him like, he used to be on this thing, right? and now he isn't, And uh, which people do, and people just because they're miserable with where they're, at, where they're at, and I didn't have the maturity to realize that I just should just let all that shit go. Right. But I couldn't get on stage anymore because I wasn't, the, well, the show wasn't on long enough. And, For people to know, yeah, and I just, it just became this pain in the ass, and I would be try, hanging out at the back of the club trying to get on, and every fucking other month, the new fat guy would move to town, and he'd be, oh, I'm fucking fat, and then they would stick him up and try to get him the, the fat guy show deal. This is the '90s when they were doing all these sitcom deals. So I finally was just like, I got to get out of here. I just want, I don't give a fuck. I'm just gonna go back to New York and try to be as funny as I could be. So you know. I'm just gonna do that, and I'm because I used to look at guys like Chris Rock, and I just looked at you know Chris Rock, you know he got SNL early on, but like when he really just said fuck this, I'm doing yes. an hour of of well this is stand up, and then he got then he got that, then he got the TV show, and then he got the movies, and he got all this other type of stuff, and like it's one of those things where I know that I can't be like well Chris did this, so then I'll just do that, and then I'll get this. It's like right. when Dane Dane was on uh, MySpace, and everybody's like well I'll go on MySpace, then I'll right, have a million right, fans. Right, it's right, like right. you're not him, right? But I knew. When I watched Chris Rock, that I was like, this this guy's a lifer. Yeah, I knew right off the bat watching. I was like, this guy, lo-, like he had those things where he had the comedy albums. Part of that montage, there was just something about that where I was like, this guy is is neck deep in this shit. Like this guy is that. a lifer, and um, I just I don't know. I just it was just. I think this is. About- I, I really honestly, where I'm at in my career right now, if I just stayed here for the rest of my career, I I would be totally fucking satisfied i put an hour out every two two and a half years yeah and everybody liked it and it was different enough from my last one that i felt like i had progressed yeah that and and people kept coming out to my shows i don't give a fuck i would love to be in ocean 14 yeah whatever i would love to do like do like a smart mouth yeah. van guy yeah i would love to do that <laughs> absolutely but if i don't give it i don't give a shit oh god i love that purity i love that so much and i think i met, see this is about the time that i knew you in new york townies was over you were in la you were back in new york and this is another one of those things that again the reels were running and i was paying attention you said to me you were like i want to do an hour every year and i was like that's ridiculous and you go it's a minute a week Minute a week. Minute yeah. a week. Yeah. Fifty two weeks. That's must have been when I was still writing that I would look at it that way. It's just ah. more like you just start talking now. But Right. Uh, and then the other thing that you said and, and But now e- you know what I discovered about you can write an hour every year as far as as far as like I go. I just feel like that's like that doesn't work for me. Like the way Louis does it, like I don't know how he does that, but it doesn't work for me where if, if I was to do it every year, the hours would be too similar. I wouldn't have I understand. Like no, it's, not you know, it's distance. weird. Like, yeah, like your life changes a lot in two years, but like a year goes by like that. But two years is you're in a different place. Where, yeah, like in, in like if I did, why do I do this? 2000, 2008, and then two thousand nine, I immediately did another special. Yeah, you know, I would have missed out on. Oh, I got a dog. Right. But I waited two years and I got a dog. I moved to L.A. Like all this right, stuff right, happened. Right, right, right. And so I had, you know, I you got, lived I, a life. I, I got into conspiracy theory. I got into like different. So it. So you knew what I was talking about when I said the Illuminati want to reduce the population of the Earth? No. Oh, yeah. No, I thought you yeah. were into it, too. That's hilarious. I am into like, it, like, too. As, as all conspiracy you re- theorists. You yeah. retweeted my thing. I said, uh, uh, hey, the government is offering free mind control shots. As a bonus, you won't get the flu. And you retweeted yeah. that. And I was like, oh, Bill must be uh, Yeah, why would you it. go down and have, first of all, oh, no. the, the antibody <laughs> or whatever it is called, the, 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 uh, the I always want to say serum, the, 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 what, uh, what do you call it? The vaccination. The vaccination has to have part of the disease. disease. So like when they come up for a cure for AIDS, they're going to shoot a little bit of AIDS in you. Just aid. Yeah, aid. One aid. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to give you one aid. (laughs) So I always go, you know, so my joke about that has always been, why don't you just take some vitamins, get eight hours sleep, and put a fucking hat on. You're going to be fine. You say that about the swine flu too. I love that. Don't just, no, straight across the board with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just do that. Don't go down there. Yeah. You Never know, been you're a gonna flu trust shot the person. government. Yeah. The amount of times when shit gets released, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, they're yeah. so fucking corrupt. Yeah, 
that even when stuff becomes public knowledge, they still black out or red right, out right, right, so right, much right, of right, it. Right, it's right. like you're really not showing me. Right. The one thing, uh, like, for example, the 9-11 conspiracy that I like to bring up, it's not anything about 9-11. It's the, the government not giving a shit about us as a people, be, like 3,000 people not being a big deal. Uh, I'm like, well, more people died after because of respiratory problems and FEMA was like it's fine to breathe the air everybody come volunteer it's fine and they knew it wasn't the amount of like fucking uh, smoke detectors and the mercury and all the shit and all the asbestos people are still dying from this it's a fucking tragedy that's my example of like oh there you go the government doesn't really give a fuck about you why would I let them give me a shot yeah, and I don't even think it's like a a systematic like they all are we gonna give a fuck about them today right all in favor it's just natural (laughs) <laughs> it's just, no, I, I don't. I don't think it's possible to govern this many people. Like once you move out of being a tribe, you yeah. can't do it. So what you got to do is just. I mean, they can't even keep the fucking paved the, the roads paved. Right. It's it's such it's fucking. Well, we have two things trying happening. To keep. I mean, how many square miles is this country trying to govern all that? It's fucking impossible. Yeah. And then you got all the other bullshit, lobbyists and people throwing money on different horses. Come on, man. Give me that contract. You got yeah. all that bullshit. Yeah. How money talks. And if you're broke, yeah. you fuck yourself. There's just like, I don't, I, I've, I've stepped away from the whole, you know, there's 20 guys and they run everything. I just think there's different gangs. Yeah. And they're, and they're all, tra- and they're sort of hooking up with other gangs and then they have like, they're little fights. Yeah, because it doesn't add up that uh, the, the problem with every conspiracy is that no one could be that organized. That's the best counter argument to any conspiracy. But the idea that a well, gang like of 9/11, people... like 9-11, like I don't get how those towers fell the way they fell. Yep. And granted, I have no engineering d- degree. And right. my research was a YouTube video. Yeah. But just the <laughs> amount of fucking people that would have to be involved and then keep their mouths shut. Yeah. I mean, you're talking two major airlines. Yeah. You know, oh, we're going we're gonna to wire... Right, two, the two of the biggest skyscrapers. Well, three. Well, that that little one, but the the, the, the two yeah, huge yeah, yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, um, Well, we're, World Trade Center Seven was a big building. Not compared to the other ones. Yeah, are we really right. going to get into right. this debate? You, you put it in uh, Cleveland; it's going to be one of the bigger buildings. I don't think it is. Uh, I could be wrong. It, one of the wider ones. Yeah, it's pretty. That wide. was yeah, it was it's pretty very, wide. Very husky. You it was a husky find... building. <laughs> It was like you as a child. Yeah. It was thick. Yeah. A thick building. Okay, and those other buildings were what people would look like in the 8th and ninth grade, and I was still down there. That's and that's, I, and, and, and you're telling me I'm one of those things, but I'm wearing this T-shirt, so no one pays me any yeah. mind. You're, you're, you're like, yeah, you're like World Trade number two, yet you're wearing that I'm the little squat building shirt. <laughs> because I don't want to threaten anybody. I want to be welcoming. Look at me. You can't do that. Make you a sandwich. You can't do that in life. Why? Because pe- I get this all the time. People are like, because fucking that, man up. That, you know all that shit with like prison, where if you go in and you're you weak, you got to kick the ass then, of the big yeah, guy. Then you're be- yeah, you see, outside is prison light. So it's still, if you make yourself an easy target on any fucking level, going down to a taco stand and you just make yourself look like you're the guy someone can step in front of and you're not going to say anything, yeah. it's going to fucking happen. And incrementally, you just, your life sucks. What and, an interesting it takes, world It takes view. more time. I I don't know about that. What is the downside of being the friendly guy in line at a taco stand? I don't see people stepping in front of me. Okay, you know what I might be guilty of? Uh, Superimposing on how I feel you should be living. So go ahead. You, know, you want to stand there all fucking day for a taco? Do it. I don't give a shit. <laughs> as long as I can wear my nerd t-shirt. <laughs> but it doesn't happen. What happens is I buy you know, the okay, taco so, so and the clerk goes, I love Star Wars. And I go, you're goddamn right. Thanks for the extra guac. No charge. High five. That sounded like a nerd beer commercial. <laughs> like, does that really happen? Then what? You're, all, you're sitting by the pool with some models. Get the fuck out of here. That never happened. Uh, no. Maybe once. Well, being a nice guy leads to people helping you. That's the troubling truth that I have to face. Well, this is what you have to do. You, well, you can't just... Uh, this is how I feel. I, people have to earn you being nice to them. You, 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 there's a certain level of respect that you give somebody because they're a fellow human being. And then as far as like going the extra, the extra, nice. that's, that's give and take. Okay. Because what happens is if you're an overly nice guy yep. and just give people the benefit of the doubt, psychos gravitate to people like you because they, especially if you're a woman, that's like, like every fucking woman that gets with one of these assholes, you ever see like some girl gets beaten by that guy? They're always like these really nice fucking girls because any other, any other girl who's like, what the f- you 
Yeah. The first time they do it, get the fuck out of here. Right, right, you know? right. Well, oh, boundaries. You're going to get some letters on that. Boundaries. I just said that like I was, uh, I'm, ah. I'm a little bit less smarter than Dr. Phil, who looks no, like a crooked cop to you're me. You're right. We need to have boundaries. What I'm learning is to not just let it be an unending stream equally given to everybody. You're absolutely right. There needs to be like, oh, you're an abusive person. You're a manipulative person. You're a negative person. You don't deserve yeah. nice guy Pete Holmes. Get the fuck out of here. Right. It comes, I'm going to turn this t-shirt inside out and it yeah. just says, fuck yourself. You know what I mean? You're like in wrestling, like you've you've been like a baby face your whole career at some point you got to switch over and be a heel you know how you do with the characters where all of a sudden sure. we need to see bad guy Pete Holmes like with the Undertaker hat grow a beard go. and dye it jet black we'll start with that and, and walk around like a piece of two by four like, like my... Hacksaw uh, uh, was it, who the hell I was going to say Hacksaw Jim Reynolds that was a football player <laughs> Hacksaw Dunning, what was the name of that wrestler I don't know come on all you nerds watch wrestling don't no, you uh, see again I don't belong completely here you want to talk about Super Nintendo you know, I never played video games. Really? My parents wouldn't let me play them because they thought it was going to take away from my studies. And, <laughs> and I still I still flunked everything. They didn't let me play sports because they thought it was going to take away from my studies. What it did was just make <laughs> Imagine me... if they had let you play both. I think, well, I still would have flunked, but I would have had a, a much better social life. But I, yeah. in, my, in my later years, I just realized, you know what? I'm sort of my own parent now. So now I play pickup hockey. Like, I always wanted to play hockey when I was a kid. I just didn't come from a hockey family. So I started playing. I fell in with these guys. The other day and uh, yesterday, one of the guys who plays with us works for the L.A. Kings. Yeah. And they got these things like a couple times during the season. You could pay like 75 bucks and go down and play at where at, the, Kings at the Staples Center. Really? I did it yesterday, dude. It was like skating on the fucking moon. <laughs> it was almost like they, they had the ice was so smooth and the puck moved so fast and you could stop so quick and you could skate faster. It was, dude, it was like... Some other guys had played before, so we skated out on this fresh ice, where it's just like, <laughs> as you're skating out there, you felt in this giant place all by yourself, <gasps> and like somebody took off the glove, they go, dude, touch the ice, you put it down, dude, it was like, I can't even Water. explain, the smoothest thing yeah. ever i had ever touched, and like, it, it, was, it was fucking unbelievable. Yeah. It was unbelievable. I want to be... Yeah, it, so I ended up, uh, you know what's so funny, I got so into what that felt like to touch that ice, I forgot what my fucking point was. You self-parenting. Yeah, so you can go out and do all the shit that they didn't let you do because your parents are just doing, you know. They're, yeah, they're, 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 they're doing the best they can with what they got. Yeah, and I didn't become a serial killer, and I didn't be. I wasn't an asshole, right? You know, well, people debate that, but whatever. I mean, I was a, <laughs> I was all right, you know. I was yeah. an all right guy. <laughs> I think about self parenting all the time. It's it's a weird it's a weird phenomenon. Recently, I wanted a, a soda. Like I was like, I really want a Coke, but Coke's like fucking bad for you. I was like, in my brain, my brain goes. Pete, you can have a Coke if you drink a glass of water first. And I was like, okay. And I drank a glass of water, didn't want the Coke anymore. And I went, well played, brain dad. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was like, there's a dad, there's a dad up there now. There's a dad. No, One, that's good. Th- let me put a button in the, uh, in the comedy and advice portion. Uh, because when you were talking about it, this is, this is the last line of an email. I wrote you an email. This was years ago, 2000, I don't know, seven or something. First of all, I couldn't believe you fucking replied to this email. We worked Peoria together. You said all these nice things, and it was great. Then I wrote you an email, and I was like, look, I'm in New York. I don't know what I'm doing. I say, I say I'm like, I have an act already. Three years, and I think I have an act. I wrote the line, I have an act already. After three years working as a middle out of Chicago. I think this yeah. is a big deal. And you didn't make fun of me. And I was like, uh, can you give me any advice on how to like avoid bullshit? Like all the bringers and barkers no, and horrible Jesus, shows. Are you going to read this? Yeah, no, I just want to read the one line that I, t- I tell people this all the time. It's just keep your head down. Don't be a dick. People will like you. You'll get in. That's what you said. That's Dude. how you ended. Fucking keep your goddamn head down. That's what I'm hearing when you say, here I am being like, Bill, please tell me how your big lofty thoughts on how you got to this theater, to these wonderful albums and, all, and whatever television just, success. You don't quit. You're like, keep your goddamn head down. That's what Gaffigan told me, too. Be undeniable. Work it, work it, work yep. it, work it, work it, work it, everything It's so else. much easier. It takes longer, but it's so much easier because uh, it's, it's not built in sand. Yeah. You just fucking just it has don't roots. try to cut corners. Just do it. Yes. And, you know, I'm not saying like, like... Well, you told me to go to the Boston, which is the opposite of cutting corners. It was like the fucking sweatiest, Yeah, go down there and, and get beat gym. up. And I get got beat, beat up. See, I never got beat up as a needed. kid. And I got my that's ass kicked. You I, want that, to talk that about... That place used to make me nervous. Yeah. Like, I'd, I'd walk by during the day and see when they... Back in the day when they had that, <laughs> that dirty red awning. Like, it literally... 
it made was your like, heart rate like go if up. we were boxers, like the yeah. fight was already over. Like yeah. during the stare down. Yes. The yes. awning won every time I saw it, and I was just like You had a visceral and, and, reaction. And I, and I hated it. I hated it. I was like, I gotta get over this fucking fear. Like yes. I was really intimidated by New York, and that's how I, I ended up eventually doing the Apollo and doing those things because right. I was like, I have to put an end to this because I know that I can be funny, but this fear is fucking with it. So yeah. rather than, you know, one of the few times, rather than running away from fear in my life, like on with, with stand-up, I always went towards it. Me too. I've and avoided through doing, it. And through doing stand-up, I've actually, you know, tried to apply it to different parts of my life. I haven't done it as successfully because... Isn't that uh, funny? That yeah. comes up a lot. That, that yeah. skill of facing fear on stage, we try and blend our offstage persona. You talk about me not being a pussy and growing a pair and all that sort of stuff. On stage, not a pussy. You know what I mean? Right. And I'm trying to be like, hey, that guy, when yeah. I get off stage, can you fucking come with me, please? This is how, this is how it kind of be. You, you start off, there, there's off stage you and on stage you. Yes. And then you become basically, then off stage and on stage is the same person. And then on stage starts passing your off stage where you start becoming the guy you wished you were off stage. Yes. And you can be way more, you know. <laughs> Like, I don't walk around telling people to go fuck themselves, but on stage, I right, do. Right, But, because there's really not, like, I don't know, there's something about being up there and you have a microphone and it's yeah, a show yeah, and, yeah. and you're, you're, you're three inches higher than the crowd. You go, oh, there's this invisible force field. So then you, yeah. you, you start having this Chuck Norris, like, like swagger. Like, the amount of times I've fucked with people in the crowd and then they're giving me shit, I'll fuck you up after the show. Yeah, go fuck. No, you're not, you fucking <laughs> pussy. Go hug your dad. And then the second... <laughs> The second I put the mic in the mic stand, it's like I put away my lightsaber, and then I immediately become off stage. Me like, oh my god! I hope he doesn't wait for me in the parking lot. Oh my god! You know, like I seriously get like go back to that that other guy because you know, I I, you know just because I'm angry and I have this accent, people think like you know, oh you had a ton of fight. I didn't. Right. I didn't. I avoided them. I walked away from tons of them. Some of them still hurt me. That I walked away and I should have taken the ass kicking. But uh, but I'm like yeah I'm like everybody. You assume I, I, you would have lost. Huh? I should have taken the ass kicker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It no, but I, I had grit. that I had that thing where uh, you know I've always had that thing where people like fucking with me and I think that that's why I became such a defensive maniac. Right. And the howdy doody and, mug and, me face. Yeah, and then and then it, it got missed taken to like oh this guy had a bunch of fights growing up right i, I didn't i actually wrote that down because i was watching your act and i was like have you ever been punched in the face you're talking about like oh getting yeah punched that, in the that face. happened but i mean yeah. i wasn't like past, past a certain age i tapped out right and it was that thing where i didn't hit my gross person all of a sudden people outweighed me by 40 pounds it's like I'm, i mean and i right. saw a couple guys get the shit kicked out of them and i was cured of that so i you had that you know, bit where I, like, I fought like right up till about like eighth grade yeah but then once high school and like you know the, all of a sudden you know that weird age where like you know, you haven't even hit puberty and your best friend has a mustache, <laughs> you know, like that age. I sort of like tapped out then and, uh, you know, and I lost a few fights and it's not fun. Getting punched in the face is not fucking fun. Yeah. And, you know, I had a, you know, like it was weird. But then like fights amongst my brothers just were, were, were nonstop, right? Like physical fights right up until about I was 20. That's funny. So I had like sort of, they almost like I felt like sanctioned fights in a way because... It was you an know, understanding. And it was an understanding that dad's coming home at some point, and if you, even if I lose, if you really fuck me up. Like, I never had the courage to just throw down with some guy in a bar because it's like, you know, I, I don't know what this guy... I, I somehow just intuitively knew that. Like this, he could be Bruce this, Lee. This, like, this isn't the guy... Yeah. Like, I remember when I was in New York, I always tell this story that like, there, was a, there was a guy who got arrested for a double murder, like murdered these two old people in Western Massachusetts. When they picked him out, he was handing out those flyers for the double-decker bus tour. Oh my and God. that right there is why... You don't fuck Because you're like, people. hey, they have busboy flyer yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And he just hacked up two people in Massachusetts. Or oh, that, that guy in that McDonald's beatdown. Those two girls thought they were thugs, and they slapped him in the face, and they didn't realize he just got out of prison. And this fucking guy was unbelievable, dude. Like, I don't know where he got this metal handle. I was joking on my podcast. It was like in cartoons, you know, where like Bugs Bunny would reach behind him, and there'd be this giant hammer. Yeah. He did that, and he fucking kicked the shit out of like he gave them the prison beat down like oh, it, like where geez. you've already beat them down and you continue for another 12 to 27 strokes like oh he, god yeah and it was just like that right there is why you don't walk around just slapping people yeah in the, don't in, slap in, people in the, in the face. face so i never had the 
I used to go to an open mic all the time where there was this one kid who was very, very strange. And I was, uh, I'm not patting, I guess I am patting myself on the back. I was one of the only people that would talk to him. And I was nice right. to him. I, we loved, everybody else loved making fun of this dude. He, he would just, he dressed like uh, Johnny Depp and in uh, Fear and Loathing and whatever. And right. he, he committed some uh, atrocious crime. I don't really remember the details, but he went away. And I was like, that's why. That's you know right. What I mean? yeah. Dane has a great bit about being nice to the office weirdo because he's like, you give him candy. Yeah. Everyone else is mean to him. <laughs> give him candy. <laughs> and on the day that he's shooting up the office, he just it, goes, thanks for the candy and doesn't see, kill you. See, Isn't that there, great? There's another guy. Yeah. There's another. Comedians should make a list. Like all these people always making those top. There's another guy. Dane. He gets defended on this podcast a lot, and I take my nerd shit for it, and I'll take it happily. I saw him – speaking of uh, what I said to Brian, uh, I was like, you should get a handwritten thank you note. I said to Dane, I was like, more people come to my shows because of you. And I was like, I appreciate that. If I do a college, I'm just some guy. Yeah, they, they didn't uh, – I don't know. Like, they didn't get to see – I got to watch him. He started a little bit earlier than I, but I got to watch him just – come up with a completely different style of stand-up. Yeah. I just don't feel like he got credit for that. Like, yeah. he used to have 15, 20-year vets shaking in their boots. That's how hard he was killing in the middle. Yeah. And they'd be like, I don't know, I shouldn't have to follow this. Right. And they'd be like, where are the jokes? Where are like, he was right. doing something so different, like, they, didn't even, so they didn't even get it. Yeah. Like, I remember one time, like, I've told this story before, like, he, the 9,000 podcasts I've done. He, like, he, one year, one year to run the, the Christmas holidays, he just would go on stage and sing holiday songs and do it in this sort of silly way. Yeah. And was killing. Yeah. And this guy in the back goes, those aren't jokes. Those aren't jokes. It's like, yeah. dude, listen to the crowd. Right. That's what's so threatening. And yeah. I've talked about this before where it's like, you can't put your, you can't quantify it. But that's what makes it this sort of, like, X factor. Fuck yourself. You wish you had that talent. Right. It makes us angry. I want to go on stage. I try. I go on stage and try and sing and be silly and try and make something that wouldn't be funny if anyone else were saying it funny. Right. I want me to be funny. Dane has that bit on his first album where he just goes, mm, pickles, mm, cheese, cheese, mm, pickles. It's someone ordering through a drive through Right. So I swear it's five minutes if it's one. It's just that. Pickles, cheese. On my pussy, it doesn't make any sense. Fucking destroying Destroys. laughter that I haven't heard humans. Make. Yeah, and that's the thing though. But now so many people have kind of like ripped them off. Yep, because that's what happens when you start a whole new style. Is then people rip it off, especially then, in LA. I feel like yeah, and then it becomes like this. I, I don't know. It's like the uh, I would say that the office. Like yes. that whole sort of everybody's awkward and yeah. then you know looking at the camera, yeah, and then looking the away camera. and do that. Now that's been done so much. That, we're gonna, we're gonna like, revert more to like seri- I think we're gonna revert more to like uh, no acknowledgement that it's a show, like almost like straight drama comedy sort of stuff. I hope like more like midnight run sort of comedy. Comes yeah, sure. Back. I've always liked that. I always like when it comes from a. Uh, I don't know. Like, like, a, like I, I prefer that. I like, prefer that style. Not like I'm shitting on the office. I'm just saying that everybody that no has been stolen. Yeah, that whole style. Well, actually, we stole that series, didn't we? We still we well, it from but BBC. also they probably or got it a little it. bit from Spinal Tap. I think Ricky Gervais would say that he that mockumentary oh, style. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, you want to trace it back even further, and I bet you could find something before Spinal Tap. I'm just not smart enough to know what it is. The last thing we always talk about on the show. This uh, is the longest podcast. I fucking love this podcast. It's no, no, Rogan. One time I did four hours. Really? And it didn't feel like four hours, and I woke up and like my, my I had like back sweat from sitting on the chair. Usually much hotter in here. I'm, we actually I don't know how we lucked out, but it's usually a sweat bath in here. Can I say one thing before we get to the last topic? You told me one time at, about doing black crowds. You were talking about this w- white girl on stage, and she was killing, uh, talking about throwing up, and then uh, all these black women were going nuts. Oh, and yeah, then, she's, I remember that. Yeah, she and was the, talking about being drunk. Yeah, and then it, do you remember the the moment that they stopped laughing? Because you told me the story, and I've been fascinated with that idea. She said, you know, she goes, you know, and then you, you're trying not to puke on yourself, and everybody's dying laughing. She was really attractive, so they immediately, everybody immediately judged her when she went up there. Right. Like, oh, fuck this good-looking bitch. Right. And then she started killing, They saw, and she had a sense of humor about herself. Then they loved her, and then she's going like, you know, and you're puking, and this happened. And then she goes, you know, your hair's sweeping across the yeah. floor, and immediately they all... <sighs> Yeah. Nothing. That was it. Because of all the weave tension, I suppose. Yeah. Or, yeah. Watch that Chris Rock documentary. I, I've hair. seen it. You yeah, watched that. So it was, and like, and I, I thought of you telling me that story. It was such a sense of, like, what she an said, interesting... She said that, and immediately, it was just... Yeah. yeah. It was just... It just stopped. And I saw the look on her face, because she had no idea. Like, yeah. I, I finally got you. Yeah. Because, you know, we were both nervous. We were like, oh, fuck. Like, like it was one of those... those 
those comedy gigs at a like college like I don't know the agent was just going for the money and yeah. they booked us to like at like Howard Junior Co- Community College I don't know what it was but we walk in there thinking it's you know it's going to be mixed yeah you know or just like you know Lily White School or whatever we walk in and it was the whole it was all all black students and then we're like two of the whitest people ever and it's just that 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 fucking unsolved Rubik's cube all right yeah. here we go start yeah. spinning the cube how am I gonna figure this out yeah. Or and, are you going to take the beating? As yeah. You <laughs> so she went up there and they immediately were, you know, were just, you know, fuck you. And she got him on her side and then she made that reference. And she gradually got him back, but she never quite killed. As hard as she was yeah, pre hair comment. The same way. And I, I was with. So and, I, and I wasn't even sure. And I was, the, the headliner was a black comic. I said it was the hair thing, right? And he goes, it was the hair thing. Interesting. I I, <laughs> and that had never been discussed. It's just so in the culture. It's like once you say that, we're gone. It's almost like religious. If you play right. Utah and you make the wrong comment, we were talking about Mormonism, make the wrong comment, you make a polygamy thing or whatever, right. gone. But it's all how you do it because if, if she actually tagged it. Right. If and, she had acknowledged addressed, it. If she addressed it. I know, it, it, I know, it, yeah. No, she would have killed on a whole nother level and then yeah. it would have been like, oh, this girl's cool. She actually – gives a fuck enough to learn beyond her own little world. Yeah. And then you go into the euphoria of the mascot zone. Yes. And then it's just like, oh, this is this is the one of you that we love. Uh. And, then, and then you start then then your shit that was like twenty percent funny becomes sixty percent funny. And <laughs> if if you're really not careful, you can you can get addicted to that. Yeah. And you'll you'll be like uh, chasing that high. No, well you'll start just doing those rooms. Yeah. And subconsciously giving them exactly what they want. Yeah. You, you start living this lie. So, That's so funny. And then you're doing kind of like, not Yeah, that. I'm a white guy. I don't know how to yeah, dance. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I remember there was a guy that used to do this bit. There's a party over here. There's a party over there. And oh, where's the party? And I don't know. It's like right there. It's like, dude, if you were intelligent enough to write that joke, you get it. So that right now you're, you're, that's phony. Yeah. And he used to always fucking kill and annoyed the shit out of me sure. whenever I saw it. I was like, that that bit is 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 that's is, a, is bullshit. We actually talk speaking of all the hack, there's a there's a thing where you take rap lyrics and some of my best friends and some of my funniest friends do this. And I I've certainly I, I just don't listen to enough hip hop, I suppose. But you take a rap lyric and then you uh the whole premise is I don't get that or that doesn't add up. That doesn't make sense. In fact I remember one time you, <laughs> me funny. Uh, and uh, fucking Sherrod were in front of the cellar. This is a very, this is a great ball busting thing. Uh-huh. So I'm new to the city, and I'm nervous just to be in front of the cellar and to be standing with you guys. So so everybody I'm, smelled it on you. And you everybody up. smelled yeah, it on you me. Got yeah, pounded. Yeah. You knew it immediately. And Sherrod made some reference. He was buying weed, and he made some reference. I don't know what it was. He called it a spliff or whatever. And, and I go, "What's a spliff?" Or right, right playing up my, the fact that, and you. Knew exactly what I was doing, but here's where it gets interesting. You couldn't break my balls because no one was listening. Like, there wasn't a window. So it was just you and me standing there, and you were like, I hate when... But then you realized Sherrod wasn't listening, so you had to wait. And <laughs> so we're just standing there, and I remember feeling like, please, Bill, don't fucking... Just let it go. And then when oh, he stopped, he was like, this fucking guy, and it destroyed him. Oh, because I I, like, you deliberately acted like you yes. didn't know what he was saying. And you were like, I hate when these white guys do that, and I was like, ah... But it's it's a it's a rite of passage. No, but that's what's great about the cellar because that whole shit happened to me too. Was sure. they, they would just, I had this thing that I was uh, I kept you know you just get into like a <laughs> like just a brain lock. I kept ending my sets going. Uh, Thank a lot, you guys were great. I had a blast. For some reason I was saying I had a blast. I did it for like a year. I don't know why I said I had a blast, but that's what I said, and nobody <laughs> called me on it. Then one time Keith Robinson. Yes. I you know I it was like third show. Stand up New York in front of like twenty people, and hey, hey, you guys were great. I had a blast, and then he just came walking out. He goes, "Really? Do you really have a blast, Bill? Do you always have a blast?" I'm shut up, stupid. <laughs> Sit down. And I was like, "Ah, fuck, you got me." And he goes, "I'm every fucking day. Hey, 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 I had a blast. <laughs> really? This is where you want to be in front of twenty people at two in the morning? You fucking disgusting." Did me. you do that on stage? Yeah, get oh. out of my face. No, he didn't do it on stage. Oh, he just no, did no. it even better. He even just did worse. It he did it in front of a bunch you. of other. Oh yeah, yeah. I, he just he completely just deep pantsed me. But you kind and of I learned. Just, and I, that's how I learned from my no, older that, brother. It, it, my older brother would great. make fun of me, and that's how I learned different lessons. And uh, I still remember the first time after I had done TV. This is actually with you, Big J. Me, you, and Big J were sitting there, and you made fun of me. And Big J goes, "Shut up, Bill. Pete's got more credits than you now." And I, I, I was like, "Shh." 
don't bring me into this. <laughs> don't bring me into this. And I remember there was this, it's su- such a weird fucking club. We want to be included. We want to be involved in those credits seem to pave the way. But I still was like, no, no, no. I'm no, I, still that, that very That was one of the afraid. angriest periods of my life. Really? It was when I, when I was working the cellar regularly in the early to mid 2000s. Really? I was really fucking angry. Yeah, cause that was when, uh, I don't know. It was just all personal life shit, and all this stuff was coming out. And uh, like when I first came to New York, I was this you know seemingly happy go lucky person, but that was just because everything was paved over. Yeah, and I was even convinced myself that I wasn't a complete fucking psycho. <laughs> and the shit kind of hit the fan in, in in the in the two thousands. So that comes back to that shit I was just telling you about in two thousand twelve. I'm still trying to work through. Not losing my shit, putting because together of that a, time? a gym apparatus. No, 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 because. Not because of what happened during that time. It was just like I. You told me I don't you used know, to I did, throw you just, Letterman you, sets and stuff. You told me that you would have a Letterman audition and you would deliberately do shit you know they would hate. No, I did that on a Conan audition because now that's when I was going through that my was a different uh, time. networks or bullshit, <laughs> and that I should be able to do my tested for AIDS bit on Conan. <laughs> and like I, I just didn't understand the business. It's like, all right, let me get this straight, kid. We were all worked our balls off for 20 years. We had a show. It started. We got ripped by the critics. And now we got this thing going. And now it's a hit. And it's all going to be brought down by some douchebag <laughs> who's been doing comedy for four years. For his AIDS his, bit. his AIDS bit. It's like I, 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 after a while, realized, like, oh, when you're doing those five-minute sets, that's just like you're doing a monologue. It's a showcase. It's a privilege to be you're there. You're a guest. Yeah, you're yeah, a guest. Yeah, you, you don't go there. Yeah, it's like you don't go there. And try to fuck up their deal. And if and I understand if you're like, well, then fuck it, I won't do them. And it's like, good, then don't do them. But don't get mad when they say, when they have rules right. for the house that they built. Yeah, oh. you know that's like you walk into somebody's house. You know, yeah. take your shoes off. Yeah, oh, yeah. you fucking sell out. But wearing shoes is my thing. That's my thing. It's my persona. Yeah, stop censoring me. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like, and, and you really don't want to do your 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 edgy as shit. Right. Save it for your special. But so you were angry at different things, not the networks during the. Well, I wasn't even angry at that. I was angry about shit that happened when I was a kid. It was just all misdirected. So that that's what I'm saying. It was all I'm working my way through that right. in the 2000s to to now. Like uh, like I'm genuinely a happy guy. Like I'm, yeah. I'm cool with where I'm at. I like my life, and uh, but I still have like those. And it's funny. I've so worked through my fucking anger. My girl's still looking at me like you were the angriest fucking person I ever met. Ah. Uh. Uh, we so, got to get to that. One one thing right. you – I remember you told me one thing before we get to relationships is that you did a special and your parents came. Are we almost done? Because she seems like she's fidgeting over there like we like we well, talked way she, too long. She has IBS. <laughs> what is IBS? Irritable, irritable bowel. Oh. A lot of shitting. <laughs> oh, really? I'm kidding. She doesn't That's have that. That's so brave of you that you can just <laughs> – Open up to that. Yeah, That's... the worst job. If you if you did have IBS, this would be the worst job for you ever to sit here and wonder how long this podcast is going to go. You know, man, I'm I'm just trying to make the podcast that I want to hear, and I don't want this conversation to be over. All right, you said well, you do have a life I have to get to. Yeah. It's like twenty to three. That's the difference between you and me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't have anywhere to be. I don't even have a show tonight. Um, anyway, your parents were at the taping. You fucking, I remember, this is another moment at the cellar. See, this is the unique thing that I have. I only have these little snapshots of your I can't life. get my car back to my girl. I just realized I said I'd be home by like 2.30. So we, we really oh, got to really? wrap this up here. We're going to wrap it up. Let's wrap it up on this one. Oh, God, then we got to do relationships. Let's talk about that. You're not married. You're 43. 43. Not married. Do you want to get married? What's, what's, how did you... I would love to get married, but I just, I am fucking terrified of, of, of getting married. And especially in, in this state, it's fucking ridiculous. It's a no fault state. Right. They can, you know, they, if they hang around for 10 years, you got to pay for them for the rest of their fucking, like Kobe has to pay for that woman for the rest of his life. Okay. I know a lot of people are going, oh, well, he has the money. All right. But it's the principle of the thing. You're right. a fucking adult. Get a goddamn job. You're a capable, Get able a fucking bodied. Job. And stop writing these fucking independent woman songs. And like, get you, yeah, yeah, we, we can do everything that you can fucking do. And then all of a sudden when it's advantageous to just be like, oh, I'm just a girl. I can't do stuff that you can fucking get away with that. It's complete fucking bullshit. <laughs> it's complete fucking bullshit. I worked 20 years to get where the fuck I'm at and I can lose it all if, if, if the person I'm with, which right. I have no control over, just decides, ah, I'm going to bang the guy across the street and you're going to fucking pay for my life for the rest of my life. Jesus. Wow. Go, and it's totally legal. Yeah. What a racket. It's bullshit. So how long have you been with your girlfriend? Uh, eight years. I'm basically married the way I want to be married. I have no intentions of leaving. It's like Carl. Like, I'm actually trying to think right now. Like, I'm like, look, 
I'm never going to leave her, so I don't have to worry about the, a marriage failing. But there's always there's the, the fly in the ointment if she decides to leave. And it's just like... Right. All of a sudden, oh, I'm in my 50s and I got to sleep on a fucking futon. Yeah. These goddamn fucking women in the crowd, when you bring it up, they go like, that's right. That's right. It's like me bringing up domestic violence. Somebody hits somebody and I go, that's right. That's, yeah, right. that's what you it's, get. It's fucking ridiculous. Oh, God. And they go, oh, well, you shouldn't have married her. They just blame you. It's like, oh, well, you shouldn't have wore that short skirt. What the fuck is wrong with you? A, a bad law is a bad law. These divorce laws are fucking ridiculous. Oh, my God. They're fucking ridiculous. And then people have to, like, guys have to organize. You gotta, there's got to be some sort of pushback. You went from the rule of thumb to this fucking shit. No fault. You can blow the guy across the street and I got to pay for your life. Oh my and I got to move out of this house, you fucking cunt. Are you serious? And all people will hear is, that's hateful towards women. You said cunt. No, that is the definition of a cunt who would do something like that. <laughs> It's fucking ridiculous. It's unbelievable. So now I can't get married because this fucking law won't change. And I'm waiting for someone else to do it because I just like yelling about it. <laughs> no, it's ridiculous. I had a buddy of mine. He fucking made it. Made a ton of money. You know, when he was, he was, he was working construction and he started get doing entertainment at night. And he got into the business and his wife's going, why don't you stop fucking around? You need to make more money. It was just a bitch to him the whole time. He ends up fucking making it. Right? They get a divorce. Okay, and she, in the divorce process, I supported him. Yeah. I did all this. I'm yeah. used to a certain lifestyle. Yeah. That's what I love, too. I'm used to a certain lifestyle. Two people are in a relationship that fails. Yeah. And one person gets to continue living as if it didn't fail. While the other person who doesn't get to live the lifestyle has to pay for that fucking lifestyle. Jesus. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Jesus. And it's straight across the board. Britney Spears, when she got divorced, divorced from that backup fucking dancer, yeah, she life. built that guy a studio. He still couldn't make a hit. What the fuck more does she have to do for this guy? And then she gives him all this money, sits around. What does he do? Gets Becomes a fat fuck. Sitting eating goddamn Doritos all day in some $3,000 tracksuit that she paid for. It's fucking <laughs> bullshit. It's fucking bullshit. So, no, I'm not married. <laughs> There you go. End it on that. It's not going to get better than that. That's fucking perfect. Bill, Burr, thank you so much, man. All right. There Sincerely. you go. Sincerely. Are you going to say keep it crispy? You don't have to. That's how we end the show. I always think it's funny when you say that. What? Keep um, it crispy. I'm on Pete Holmes. You made it weird. Keep it crispy. Keep it crispy, motherfuckers. Yeah! All right. See ya. <laughs> now leaving Nerdist.com. Nerdist.com.